What's happening, lads? How are we? Welcome to this week's episode of Have A Word, the podcast. We're here to tell you before we kick off today. We're taking this bad boy on the road. We're doing live versions of Have A Word, the podcast, and tickets are available right now at haveawordlive.com. Where are we going, lads? We're going to Newcastle, we're going to Dublin, and we're going to Glasgow. Come 8th and see- of June, 6th of July, 15th of July. I stood on your words, but it doesn't matter. And on top of the live stuff, please do not forget, we've got the best Patreon in the game, one of the biggest on the planet, Dan. Tell them all about it. Uh, you get an extra episode if you sign up at patreon.com slash haveawordpod. Every Wednesday, you get a patron exclusive, which is just the lids, no guest, but it's unfiltered, have a word bullshit, some of our best podcasting. On top of the extra episode every week, you get early access to these public episodes and access to our entire back catalogue of the patron exclusives that come out every Wednesday and the patron specials. You get one brand new one of these every month. We've got lock-ins where we got drunk in the studio. We've got the ghost hunts where we went and spent nights in haunted houses. We've got the Nashville special coming next month. It's the best patron in the game for a reason. There's loads more than what I've just listed. You get access to every single bit of it from just three quid a month when you go to patreon.com slash have a weird pod. Do it. Sign up. Biggest in the UK. You know. And enjoy the episode. It's going to be about it. Oh, yeah. Wag wag, leads. You're listening to the funniest podcast in the game with Adam, Dan, Sensei Kal, and Finn. This is the one and only Have a Word. Brought to you by Manscaped.com. The very best in below the belt men's grooming. Go, Ed. Get on me. <laughs> I am flying high on a combination of coffee and my new supplement. Yeah. Have you had any caffeine this morning? Yeah. I've had sneak. Where is it? Have you? Have you I've actually had some? Yeah, I drank it on the way. Okay. So I, I brought you in a magic mind. I thought you might want to try <laughs> it. <laughs> Woo! Give it a big old shake. So what? I've already had mine. By the way, this is not an advert. Um, they, oh, they, I've got not, to drink it. They're not paying me. But uh, it, it, it boosts your energy, helps you relax, keeps you focused, and gives you immunity. To what? <laughs> AIDS. <laughs> Diplo- no, in, in, no, diplomatic. In murder, in murder trials. <laughs> diplomatic. Murder you trials. can't get prosecuted. immunity from... <laughs> in Uganda. You pull it up, the judge goes... He's closed. Uh, you have been people trafficking. Uh, have I? Ugandan judge? <laughs> no. <laughs> what a mad name for the judge. <laughs> you don't learn the names. Not when you've got immunity. Carl's tasted it. It tastes a bit like battery acid, but it's oh. nice. I don't mind. I think I... Like yeah, it's a, nice battery yeah. acid. like flavoured, fruity battery acid. And you acid. snort it. No, it's yeah. like a fruity pussy. What? It is a bit pussy like. Excuse me? <laughs> That's fine. I mean, it's not, but we all put up with it because it's nice. <laughs> fruity? Yeah. Fruity? Talk me through a fruity pussy. No, I've never had one, but that was what Dan, I, that would be honestly, a fruity pussy. Honestly, put this in your mouth and tell me it doesn't taste like a woman has put like a lime in a vagina and then yeah, spread it in your mouth. Exactly. Oh, a Mexican woman. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, have a little sip. Oh, he's down there. <laughs> <laughs> Fruity pussy. <laughs> I'm right, aren't I? Well, that, that bitch not well. <laughs> uh, Ring an endorsement from you. Listen, it's like someone's gone, we want a healthy supplement, but what if it also tasted a bit like an old chew it <laughs> that's melted in the little packet and then a little bit of hairspray? <laughs> Oh, what it tastes like to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's got like a, it's irony, isn't it, with a little bit of fruit. <laughs> right, good. Thank you for that. Where'd you get these? On the internet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that could be ricin. <laughs> um, on. It doesn't have nuts in it, does it? <laughs> <laughs> on the internet, from a, a hyperlink on Instagram. Oh, I love. I love an Instagram shop. Really? Yeah. Have you have you uh, seen the advert for uh, Siente, the shorts? No. All right, cool. Well, then they're just blanket bombing my Instagram. And I just gave up. I just bought it. <laughs> like, Siente have just dropped their new line of cargo shorts. I was like, oh, I don't give a fuck. Oh, but you on don't the give a fuck about life if you're buying cargo 500 shorts? 500 times. They've, I like shorts in the summer. Cargo shorts. They're just, they're quite, they're just cargo like, pants, but shorter. How many pockets have they got? Just got one on each side. I've That's not like worn them here. Shorts. Cargo shorts have to have like an extra like army pocket for your yeah. guns and that. They've got no, yeah. they've got little on the side. Yeah. I mean, Carl, you can call me a cunt all you want, but I'm you can't. Call you a cunt? They, they, they are cargo shorts. I've seen them. I've worn them. But they literally, Siente just went, yeah, I thought everyone was getting them. 
<laughs> and now I've just given no, up. We will. And now, guess what? Yeah. Guess what? Sienti are like, <laughs> you've bought a pair. You'll want another. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that doesn't make the adverts go away. Actually oh, responding no. to them. I know. Why is there not an option for internet adverts where you can go, I've fucking bought this. It is. Leave me alone. I is don't there? want to see this ad anymore. Yeah. What? Yeah. On the Grum? the little three so dots. The on the, on, yeah. on the yeah. Instagram? Yeah. 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 Like, I never get an advert from um, the newspaper that shall not be named. Yeah. I've got them all blocked on every... Uh, yeah. every no, episode. neither do I. I must... I must... Do, Hello, Mr. Reigler. Answer the phone call. Okay. Oh, God. Hello. Hi, Carl. It's Joyce from Pure Dental. Hi, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm just giving you a call just to, um, there was a little reminder to, to remind you to start taking Brush your teeth. Products. Yeah, yeah, your colleague called me about Carl, hard, where's no? me rabbit? Oh, I just, oh, I just, oh, there you go. Lovely. Nice one. Um, I did want to see if you're not going to make me come, I'll make myself come. I sent you the finance. Call the lube's drying. Yeah, I'll get it. I'll get that sorted later. I'll get it all. Carl, there's a big line of cocaine here for you. Come on. Finger me! Oh, sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm with a gang of uh, inappropriate gentlemen. Oh! Oh, oh we're the inappropriate gentlemen oh. gang. What? 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 We don't say we're the IGs. Oh my God. We're the IGs. Listen, welcome to the inappropriate. <laughs> This is the Inappropriate Gentleman Gang Pod, and we are gung gung. It's a good job she's Pretty sad. inappropriate. <laughs> oh my God, we put a shoe in the letterbox. It's inappropriate, gung gung. <laughs> <laughs> what are we like? But we're still gentlemen. We say please and thank you, innit? <laughs> uh, we've just renamed the pod. I was muting it perfectly, and then I unmuted it and so went, finger me. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking numpty. Um, thank you so much for making me get Instagram. <laughs> Is your uh, <laughs> because it's you just, small bottle? You flinch. <laughs> I thought it was like further away way from there. <laughs> Benny Boots. That, you know when someone flinches a certain way and then they're like, uh, "Thanks for making me get Instagram. I appreciate that." You, uh -huh. I, I wouldn't have got an Instagram when we started the podcast. You were like, D "Why have you just got Facebook and Twitter?" I was like, oh, "I can't be asked with the gram." It's yeah. just like it's the best one, though, isn't it? It's just women's going. Oh, look what I've made for my tea, and oh god, I've done this with my living room. And then, what? and it turns out <laughs> it's loads of followers, thirty thousand. Thanks very much, and loads of tits, mm. tattoo tits. Congratulations on thirty thousand followers. Well, but thank you for making me get it, because I fucking love the grum. He went to tattoo tits, yeah. Um, <laughs> any tattoo is good, isn't it? Nah. No, nah. most tattoos. face tattoo. Well, <laughs> okay, yeah. And there, there we go. At level well, one, Luton lost. Town over both nipple. <laughs> Is there tit tattoos? Yeah, go to town, mate. Oh no, the spiders are the one. I'm not. Oh, I've never seen that. I thought I mean, that was like, underneath. You've never yeah, seen. Yeah, I thought that was underneath. Is that I, I, on? No, I quite like that. But the actual spider webs around the nipples, with oh, the that, nipples I, being that, the centre point, it looks like fancy dress. No, well, Spider Woman. Every tit time's Halloween, isn't it? I'm not into it. Yeah, but then when she's like breastfeeding, it'll look like she's got spider webs coming out of her tit. Oh, right. A little baby man. goth. <laughs> no, it'll look like the paw prints on the boot. Like, it's so tacky. Yeah, they, you know? they, they are, yeah. Have seen them? You got, like paw prints there. Like, oh, there's a, bit, a dog been walking over me tits. What know? about uh, <laughs> R.I.P. dead pig on your butt cheek? Is that classy? That's, that's classy. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm not going to look at your ass. I'm going to make you look at my ass. Don't well, ever say things like that. Get, get We're up. the inappropriate gentleman gang pod. <laughs> <laughs> we do all sorts. I'll ask first and then get my ass. Here's out. Here's a question. Right. If if Carl was on eye level with your ass, right? Yeah. So he's on his knees and you're naked facing that wall and Carl's on his knees where I am. I've dropped my toppy crisp wrapper. Like a gay Blair Witch. Go on. Right. Would he, if your legs were at but, sort of, you know, 20 to 8, no, 20 past 8, Right. He's right. doing a Ronaldo. Yeah. 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 Would Carl be able to see your cock? Let's find out. <laughs> Come on. I'm going on my knees. We're looking for a new patron special. So Can you see Dan's dick? Will it dangle over your bollocks through your legs? Isn't that a sea shanty? <laughs> <laughs> Will it dangle over your bollocks through your legs? <laughs> um, I, uh, how warm is it? How warm is it? Oh, is it a summer's day? Where are we? We're in the studio, then. It's, it's, like, it's, it's spring <laughs> when, when you do that. It's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> two in two days. Um, where are we in the situation, Carl? Oh, I think you knew we're staying I mean. with the question I asked. Yeah. Oh, I thought we were ready to move on. Oh, um, no. It's today. Let's, it's let's today. Say, hey, it's you, today. You throw, th you throw something out there. I'll catch and run. Okay. Um, uh, it's today in here. Yeah. 
with the aircon not quite working. You've I'd say a, it's a cool 20 degrees. You've done a little helicopter mm. as well. It's a warm I warm. can't do a helicopter. I can do the flip flop. Handheld fan. Plop, 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 plop. You've done that to wake him up. Right. Get the blood moving. I've just had a bath. No, I've not. We're in here. It's today. It's right now. <laughs> right now. Have you yeah. just had a bath? <laughs> Kicks off, face the wall. Carl gets on his knees to look at your asshole. Can he see your cock? Go. From, from, the bath. from behind. <laughs> I don't know if... I mean, if you can't see it from the front, that's a serious problem. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I got my dick out yesterday and it was trying to escape up inside me. I don't know what was happening. It was really bad. I think it's getting smaller. What for? I don't... I don't. Were you just going for a piss? I just... You just I know I got home from the pod and I was, I was like, I'm going to have a quick shower. I felt a bit like warm because I'd worn a hoodie and a jacket in here all day. And I just thought I'll have a quick shower. And my dick was like, no, sir. I had the greatest confidence boost a man can ever get the other day. I had a shower shortly after having sex you know and your dick still sort of oh, like yeah. like it's it's gone flaccid but it's still like i'm here man yeah right <laughs> it's fucking that's i was washing it and that's i was what like your dick says isn't it if my dick, <laughs> yo yo adam I'm here, I'm here, post sex man. dick is the best dick oh because it's flaccid but it's like chunky oh is that is that your favorite type of dick yeah oh yeah 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 it is. Once you've had sex with your lady, that's the kind of dick. If I you look like at your man's yeah. leg, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> chubby. You love a chubby dick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm having a little chub on. Oh, you, <laughs> oh sorry, on you. Yeah. You know, um, Dan, you've done that twice in two days. No. Oh. Um, <laughs> no, I think you'd see balls. I'm not see. I'm, I'm not sure you'd see dick. Should dick not go beyond your balls? No, not beyond. It doesn't have to go beyond his balls. He needs to go lower than his balls. That's what I mean. I don't think my dick goes lower than my balls, but I want to check. Mm, I don't know. I think it might be. I think you might just see uh, R.I.P. Runty crack and balls. I think it does. Does it? I think it sits. It, that's to like be really like floppy for it to go round the balls. Is your penis like? so much longer than your balls? I think it's a little bit. All right. Okay. If I give it a little fluff, especially yeah. like an elephant. I mean, in the shower the other day. It's fucking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sort of. Feel oh, on my knees, mate. Yeah, no. I have to dry this on the fucking line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's towel. towel. All right, Martin, Peter. just dry me dick, mate. How's the wife and kids? <laughs> Show them this. I feel great right now. Do you? Feel oh, like yeah, hang on. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> How much was that? They're like um, £3.50 a bottle. Oh, God, yeah. Same place as a bottle of Sneak. Well, I don't know. <laughs> but what you, have it, not uh, getting, you have it alongside it's not your normal competing caffeine. with Sneak. It's obviously... Far superior. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Sneak. What flavour's that done? It, this is a Sneak Hydrate, and this is electric mango. It's got Not electrolytes, just isn't it? It's, thank you, Finn. Yeah. It's electric mango with electrolytes and electricity. Turn it around so it's got the sneak point. No, there we go. Yeah, no, there no, you go. No, 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 I'm no. doing a corporate gig tonight. <laughs> First one in a while. All right. <laughs> Why are you happy about that? Oh, money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, Dan turn the sneak tub round. Who's it? Who's it for? Oh my god! The comedy store. There we go. It's for the comedy store. Yeah, at the comedy store. No. Oh. So it's in. Oh, Manchester. there is no comedy store. It's. I think it's at the beer keller in Manchester. Wow. And I'm, I'm hosting. Wow. I'm, I'm introducing just the more house. Wow. And Paul Chowdhury. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Paul Chowdhury's funny. Yeah. I mean, Justin Morehouse. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen Justin Morehouse seventy-two thousand times because. From the moment I started stand up, he's just been an ever present. Paul Chowdhury, I've not seen loads. He's a very funny comic. And then I think I'm going to have to go to the hospital because I've, uh, my, if you're a patron, you'll already know I've got broken ribs and uh, they're getting worse. <laughs> Done? Please. Oh, hey, uh, but, hey, oh, oh. And now it's time for Adam's health update. Uh, well, I had two Cody in last night and they didn't touch it. Can I just say though, you in broken me. ribs, you're in a great mood. You've been in a great, great mood yesterday for the Patreon exclusive. You know you're in a great let, mood today. I it's magic let, um, mind, broken ribs. I don't let um, I don't let life's trials and tribulations slow me down. <laughs> okay, you know what I mean that's really good. Is that an obstacle? Do I go round it, under it, over it? I fucking boost its head in and go through right it, mate. Yeah. Do a corporate, go to the Aussie. Fucking nailing it. Yeah, went to therapy yesterday. Another win. What? Let's go on again. So it's a 2 0. <laughs> yeah, that's how that works, isn't it? You're fucking shit. I'm doing loads of talking. 2 0 to me. How much? Nah, free. Oh, Should up. be free. <laughs> Write this down. Case study. Get a PhD <laughs> from me. Pay me to do me. <laughs> it's like you were there. What so, was... uh, how's counselling doing? 
We can't name her. Yeah, stop naming her. Oh, she really called <laughs> Yes, and you know she is. Oh, my God. Right, make up a name. Okay. Susie. Sandra. Bonner. Susie. No, Councillor Sandra. Susie. No, I like Susie. It, we've just done Susie Big Tits, haven't we, for Susie Big Tits for Freddie. Um, Jonathan. How's Councillor um, Sandra? How's Sandra the Councillor? She's sound. She's uh, making me realise that, you know what? I've done quite well. <laughs> and... Uh, Oh, you need more confidence. Is that what is that what she said? That's what she said. Actually. Don't be so down on yourself. Basically, you need to just. She said, she said, "I'm a very harsh critic of my own behaviour, but I forgive other people's too easily." So use it all on fucking. Some bully just came to me. <laughs> is she a patron? Is she trying to suck you off? <laughs> what are you on about? Yeah. You she seem... wants more money. <laughs> you seem <laughs> you seem pretty pleased with yourself most of the time. Yeah, but you're not annoyed with others. Head, yeah, I'm telling her uh, stuff I don't tell you. Uh, oh. oh. Ooh. Start a podcast with her then. What? A big slag. You, not her. <laughs> He's already got four new podcasts on the go. Plus, <laughs> we've got to start the inappropriate gentleman's gang. <laughs> which is going to fucking go off, mate. Can't wait for that. Um, so she's basically telling you what you want to hear constantly. No, there's a couple of things I didn't like. What were they? Done to myself. Oh, no, come on. Give us a little... We don't want to hear like, yeah, do counsel again. She says you're great. Everyone else is wrong and you're fucking great. Ah, I don't, ah, I don't. That's not, we, we, we want a bit more juice. She said she can see his dick from behind yeah. with his arsehole spread. This isn't usually how <laughs> I do like, these Adam, sessions. Adam, could you pull your trousers up? I can see your cock now, your ankles there, sunshine. And I was like, I've just had sex in the shower, love. She was like, okay, back to talking about you. And I was like, all right then. Female. Um, yeah, you should never have a counsellor say, please pull your pants back up. <laughs> back up. That's that's one of them faux pas, isn't it? As, yeah. As terms of, a, you know, obviously it's quite an intimate process. No, she meant like the pull, pull them down because it was coming out bottom of your pants. And was oh, pretending. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. a joke. Okay. And that was a joke. <laughs> Here on Have a Word. <laughs> We need to start the new pod, don't we? Inappropriate gentleman's gang would have <laughs> never put up with that. We're like, whoa, get your dick out now, bruv. Whoa. Please. Please. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Brother. Please and thank you. That's the banter. Uh, um, did a couple of gigs last night as well. Oh, God. God. Tony yeah, Carroll a... and Friends at Hot Water. Oh, nice. Popped into the ship and forecast. How's Tony Carroll doing? I have only seen him twice in the last year doing the Hot Water Green Room pod. How's he doing? I've literally just seen him to chat to him on the pod. How's his... Because he's stand-up. Tony Carroll started he's out at the same time He's never going to be you. a proper stand-up. He hasn't got it in him to do what it takes. But then he always smashes it when he does it. Yeah, but like last night... So he, he just went on, did a new bit for like eight minutes and then brought me on to open. Like did no crowd work. He's just, because it's, it's Tony Carroll and friends, he can do what he wants. Yeah. And he'll, he'll do, Tony always, like he used to, every year he'd go like, I'm doing my solo show. And he'd sell a ticket, he'd sell like 80 tickets and he'd just go on and do like an hour of stuff. Most of which he'd done before, the year before and the year before that. And that was it. But now he's started doing Tony Cattle and Friends. He's figured out a way to do a solo show and only <laughs> has to be five minutes. Um, the lineup was really good. I did that and then I went down to the shipping forecast, uh, the Mild High Clubs gig. And because like Tony had heavily advertised that he was doing that at Hot Water and Eurovision's on, there was only eight people at the shipping forecast. And I haven't done a gig like that for years. You know, where there's just no one there. And I actually really enjoyed it. Who, do you think it's harder, the small gigs where there's only eight people? Because I, you're, I'm, so I'm a co sort of conversational, observational storyteller. My style can go big in a big room. I can get very performative, but I can tune it down to eight people by making it quite chatty. You have got that as well, because you can compare. Do you think it's harder for one-liners or almost like, I mean, it's got to be harder those rooms for character acts. Yeah, who? Where, you just look mental, don't you? Yeah, because yeah, you see them at the bar a minute later, out of character. I think for one line of comedians who've got actual sort of yeah, set up hard. jokes, eight people is a. I don't know, you know. You think? Because, like, a joke is a joke, innit? Like, I could tell you a joke and you'll laugh now, one on one. So it's just eight times that. But, yeah, but with eight people when you're doing your stand up, you can, you know, in a big room, you've got to go, you've got to. You're looking for like laughs of recognition, but you can actually, for eight people, 
start tailoring it to that crowd, can't I, you? You I can think- also, like, you can do crowd work with the whole room because the whole room's eight people. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, if you've got the comparing skills, you're making it look like you are just tailoring a conversation to these people. It's actually material. I think the hardest thing to do with eight people is the stuff that I try and do. The which it- confront them, get them to disagree yeah. with you, and then win them because over. Because they become stuff. a very easy team. Like, if you just say something that they don't like, then eight people can look around and go, no. No. Like a jury. Yeah. Yeah. Like in, in a big room, it only takes one person in a room of 200 to sort of uncomfortably laugh. And then that gets contagious and then it spreads and then you've won them round. In eight people, that's a lot harder to do. Having said that, the um, the Madeline McCann routine worked in front of eight people last night. That's... Yeah, because it's fucking great. It's nice having new stuff in it. Mm. We're going to do this check-in every month. like. <laughs> but I need I need to start doing newer, newer stuff now. I'm yeah, oh no, this is why I've got like a list of stuff that I've got for the show. And then I've got, oh, this is all going well. And there's part of me thinking, well, you, I'm previewing in Northern Dun at the end of June, July and August, the previews. Doesn't matter that that 25 minutes is working. I almost feel like I need to dump that 25 minutes until the previews because yeah. I need another 25, 30 minutes. That's I, so mental. I'll be happy if I go to Edinburgh with 35 of I'm bang, bang, bang ready. Because then by the end of Edinburgh, I'll be, I'll have 50. And then by the end of the tour, I'll have 70. Not that I'm not looking forward to the tour. I absolutely am. But I fucking love those small room pre- previews. They're Me just too. so fun. I'm doing They're it. so fun because you go on, not 100% sure. And I, I did Birkenhead last night. I'm doing Birkenhead again this year, a couple of times. I did four times last year. Uh, I'm doing Grappen Hall. I'm doing uh, Newcastle under light. And, and I, when I got back from the tour shows, it was done. The tour was done. There was changes here and there. When I got back from the previews, I sat down in the kitchen and rewrote the show. Mm-hmm. There's something really like rewarding about that process of like, well, I'm every good gig's a win at the preview stage. Totally. I've got, um, I've got a run of four shows at the end of this month at the Jacaranda. I'm doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They're all sold out, but I am going to add like 10 to 15 tickets for each show um, the week of. Because I just like the, the Jacaranda room is so small. If you get 10 no shows, it can affect the yeah, gig. Yeah. So I'm going to add 10 so that they'll be coming sort of maybe this week. Alfie Brown's one of the, the friends. He's coming up to do it with me. There'll be at least one more. But Alfie's di- like the way Alfie directed Juicy, Alfie is coming to direct my show again. So that week in Liverpool, I will go from having ideas and bits that work to a fully coherent idea of where I'm taking the show. And I know. To have Alfie for four nights. It's fucking unbelievable. You're one of the best comics in the country and you've got another of the best comics in the country directing your show. It's it's not on. <laughs> it's not on. What the fuck? Now I'm thinking about it. Who's fucking directing? My, I don't know why I'm looking at Finn. Finn. I'll direct you. Nice one. Right, cool. I think what makes me and Alfie work so well together and what worked really well on Juicy is our, we're, we're, we're really good friends and we get on and obviously working together makes that, that being really good friends makes working together easier. But his weaknesses are my strengths and his his strengths are my weaknesses. I'm a, I'm an, uh, a traditional club comic who has struggled in the past to make a proper narrative out of a show. Yeah, yeah. And Alfie Same. is someone who has struggled to be a murderer in clubs, but has always been able to put the narrative of a show together. And then you combine that and like, if you look at Juicy, like that I, that's the work I'm most proud of. And I don't know there's anyone that you respect much more than Alfie. No, as a comedian, not, really. not in the I UK. Can, anyway. Like, you're. I like, obviously we talk about stand up a lot, and you've got some very talented mates, but I don't think there's anyone you respect more than Alfie in terms of his opinion and his like smarts and his, especially stand up wise. His insight for Juicy was just insane. Jack Finnegan seen a lot of it, so Jack who does all of our photography, um, and was is going to be a big part of the Nashville special. He's going to be on camera a bit for that, isn't he? Um, Jack photographed my entire preview run the two weeks before we filmed Juicy. And he was in the car with me a lot of the time. When, so it'd be me in the front seat, Alfie in the front seat, and Jack in the back. And Alfie would just be like, here's the 45 things you did wrong tonight. Here's the 30 that I told you to do that you did well. And Jack was just like blown away because he'd never seen that level of deconstruction of stand-up. Yeah. Um, and and Jack, when Jack's not into stand-up, he's really not into it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he's like panic attack, not into it. <laughs> but he's fascinated by the process, isn't he? You yeah. can tell he's a, he's a very creative. Fan. Jack. 
So I'm getting Tony Carroll to direct my uh, tour show <laughs> and I'm going to be doing five of the top and getting some mates on. <laughs> See you on tour. Dan if you had to pick a director, any comic in the country, who, who, if you could pick a couple where you'd be like, I, I could work with them and they, they could make an impact oh, on my... a good question. Who, who, would, who are you going for? Because I don't think there's anyone for me that fits better than Alfie does, really. So... In all honesty, Alfie would benefit my show, but I don't. He, the the chemistry that you've got is is isn't wouldn't be the same with me and Alfie. I uh, I think he I think he's so good. Like I'd say the same with like Finn Taylor. I it's a different style. Of, it's yeah, not it, that it's massively that's why different. It's a hard question because it's not just what it, who is a comic you like. It's who is a comic you like whose opinion you trust. Who you think would make an impact on your show? Yeah, they've got to be. They wouldn't just be going, Dan, that was all good, that. I liked it. You can't have that. And you also can't have someone who's going to be like, hey, you know what would be really good? If, uh, you know, in that third joke, if you threw a dead baby line in. <laughs> <laughs> Edgelord. <laughs> and also, I've got comedian mates who are fucking really good at what they do. Like, like excellent comics who I don't think could give me the insight to make my stand up better. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not. Just you've got to the person you're picking to do this. You've got to you've got to love their stand up, and also how they see comedy has got to fit your vision in some way. You don't have to be the same comic. Mm. Um, I'd yeah, Sean, I'd, Sean, Sean, Sean Walsh, Sean yeah, Walsh. Yeah. Like he got your energy on stage as well. He's got a lot of my energy. He's a he's when I watch Sean Walsh, I can see Lee Evans. I can see the Lee, yeah, the yeah. love of Lee Evans you know in what Sean. Else I can see heavily in Sean. And I said this to him years ago before we were friends. And he was like, he, he, he took it as like a big compliment. I said, do you know what you, what I think when I watch you, Sean, I think you're like an amalgamation of Lee Evans and Dylan Morton. And he was like, yeah, yeah. He's got that irreverent, sort of, irreverent um, energy, surly yeah. dismissive, everything shit of, mm. Uh, Dylan Moore and very insightful and can pick a line that like that Lee Evans wouldn't pick, but then has got the, m much more energy than Dylan to a Lee Evans level. It's the it's you know with my stuff when I'm really <coughs> having fun on stage and telling stories and um, like I'm not a, a great tweeter and I also think if you're a, a one. I. A one, Carl, Carl's the best tweeter oh, yeah. at this business. But if you're a, a if, if you're looking at the future of comedy and the way it's going online. Being a, a, a comedian who tells stories about their life and, and, and does observations that are personal to them and does slightly longer form stuff like stories that are uh, from real life. Actually, going forward, I'm glad I'm that comic mm. because jokes can be done, especially topical comics must be like, what? How, how can I fight the internet when it's Carl. just instantly goes on? An hour after it's happened, you're done. I, oh, yeah. I, I, I think I'm happiest when I'm doing the act outs and the, and the, so yeah, Sean Walsh is a great, the, the brilliant comics that I'm thinking of aren't similar to me. Like you look at Mark Nelson, he could help me get funnies out of a joke, but he does such a fucking different yeah. style of comedy. Whereas Sean Walsh, I think hey, is Sean, a, is a Sean, great shout because he, because he, act, he acts out he's got and I think he's him. exceptional. Oh, Sean's one of the best. And he's one the of the best, best right fucking now. guys. And it's. What about, and. If, if you're immediately dismissive of this, we can just cut it out. What about Jason Cook? Yeah, Jason, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I think Jason, because when I when I first came up, Jason took me under his wing, and that's why I sell more tickets like in that area than any place outside Liverpool, really. Jason came to- Also, you went and fucking humped South Shield several T times. Totally. But like, I only got the opportunities that because he gave Do you know, me. I was there about two months after you played it for one of the first times. Yeah. And he went, how much are you gigging with Adam Adam Rowe? And I was like, yeah, I'm kicking a lot with him. I was literally with him for his first few gigs. I was hosting some of his first few gigs. And I was like, he was like, he destroyed this as well as any headliner I've paid 400 quid to so I was the, in, for the last few years. I was in the middle of that opening night and it was David Haddingham. It was good. I was in the middle and very hungry and it was stayed at the end. So Haddingham, who I, I love, but he's been doing a similar set for a while. Damn you. And then I went in the middle and was just like this cocky, I had this perfect 20, like me first 20. And then it was a night where Tom stayed. He did really well. Stayed got an encore because he was the headliner and Jason like all the there. But Stade was in that uh, part of his process where he was doing newer stuff. Yeah. So I just looked. Where we are On now. a strong bill. Yeah. I was like, 
I, I, I just smack and also had the easiest spot. But, but Jason, he was he was a champion of yours. Totally. While while you weren't getting championed everywhere. Totally. Like he was so early on how good you and, were. And um so Jason like, used to come. Cunt? I'd always do a preview in the build up to Edinburgh at South Shield. And he would come and he would give me a load of notes. And for the first the first year he did it, they were all really useful. After that, when I changed my style a bit, there was a, a few things where I was like, that doesn't quite fit with me anymore. But I think for your style of stuff, no, yeah, I, I, agree. I think Jason would be good shot. really, really, really good. He did it for Chris Ramsey as well. He worked really closely with Chris. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, look at where fucking Chris, not that Jason's like the sole reason Chris Ramsey's where he is, but big part of it, their, their friendship was, was a big part of that. I love Carl Don now I'm doing that thing of like, who's your favorite comic? But that doesn't necessarily uh, match up. So who, here's a- I think Carl Donnelly's a lot more similar to Danny Mack than he is to you. Yeah. I think Carl Donnelly, Danny Mack, and for someone who's took it to the nth degree and been really successful, James Acaster, I think they're three very yeah, similar yeah, comics. But their status is different. Carl, totally. Danny plays a weirdly sort of like a high status. Yeah. Too cool for school, and isn't it? Carl Donnelly- Plays a everyman. A, I've seen Carl Donnelly do that. That low status, like it's so genuine and authentic, and it always was with Carl Donnelly. Like from his first gigs, I was like, "There's no one doing stand up like this." And uh, I saw him do a, a corporate at the Nottingham Glee, and I was on my absolute like in the middle of me being a fucking. It, comparing was easy to me. We're talking eight, nine years ago. It was all I was doing. It was so easy. And I was like, oh, this, com this corporate was at the Nottingham Glee where me and Laura got married a few years after, but uh, they really loved me, the Glee, and always were brilliant to me. So that I was their pick. And then uh, off the curb booked um, Carl Donnelly, the headlining act who I won't say was a sort of musical act that would have been, on paper you're like, oh, they'll smash it. The corporate was tough and I had to work and I did 10, 15 and I got him. They were like, all right, okay. It was one of them where, yeah. you know, when a corporate goes, all right, yeah, okay, cool, fine. But yeah, yeah. they're not like, amazing. Carl Donnelly went on and I watched them try and go, nah, not for me. For the first five minutes, I was like, oh, this is going to be a long night for Carl. And then it just started building as they, the whole room He's just went. He's very patient. And his, he yeah, his, the whole room just went, oh, this is pretty good. And by minute 10, 12, they're like, oh, this is really good. And the last five, six, seven minutes, they were all on board. It was such a, a class performance in a tricky room. Like, fair enough, it's a comedy club, but it wasn't easy. And he just won them over by being not, he's not a massive, sh he's not, he doesn't shout anyone down. It's not high status. He's not slamming anyone. He's just telling these amazing stories, seen through the eyes of a really smart guy who's just, I just love his view of life. And then the headliner went on. I had an easier five, 10 minutes in the second section because they were like, oh, cool, you brought that guy on and yeah, you're good. And then the headline act absolutely ate their balls. <laughs> I mean, ate their balls to the point where I was at the back starting to cringe a little bit. Musical as comedy a, not working is so oh cringy. Oh my God. You, you also <laughs> feel a bit responsible. You feel like, oh, what, what have, I, have I done a bit this wrong? And then I'm like, well, no, Carl did well. And a guy went, what the fuck? Literally just went, what the fuck is this? <laughs> he literally went, dude, you said these were good. Fucking hell. Just wandered off. I was like, oh. <laughs> he wasn't even a dick about it. He looked like someone about my age. He was like a graphic design company. I had a musical comic <laughs> close uh, a Jonglers on the Road gig that I was hosting years ago. And someone from the audience come over and put five pound coins in my hand as a bribe for me to go and get them off. <laughs> What a classy. So he, 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 went, he went, lads, he went, yeah, come here. And they all dropped on the floor. And I went, what's that? And he went, it's a five. I said, get them off. Right, listen, if you're ever going to do the heavy palm, never do it with coins. Here's a quick question, just on the same thing. If you could have uh, this next show, What's Wrong With Me, directed in the same way that Alfie's doing by a British famous uh, comedian, like a one of the the big names. Who's the uh, comic you'd want that insight from, if you had to pick? Because I'd love to know how Mickey Flanagan works. No, M Mickey's not right for it. Um, oh yeah, yeah. What? Jack D. No. 
really yeah i think i think the most famous person i can think of and it's weird because it doesn't seem like there'd be anyone who'd fit both of us i think sean i think sean's got some really insightful stuff and he, he gave me a couple of things in the build-up to juicy before i started working with alfie um it's hard for me to answer because i just can't imagine no i know it's, it's I've, I've never been able to imagine having any director ever until i worked with alfie I on literally never thought is it proper self-deprecating this show no right that's why you went do you know what day. Yeah. Do you know who I think would have made a brilliant director of other people's stand-up because of his comedy now? I think Sean Locke. I think Sean Locke had the fucking smarts that if he, he, he could sit down with any comic and add to a show. Yeah. I, I think he had that sort of brilliance. He's, he's maybe not held up as one of the, the, the very, very best, but I think he was technically, I think he was in terms of what he could do. He maybe never got to the arena size. I also think John Richardson should, like yeah. not everyone talks about John as, as, as one of the best. I've, I've never seen a brain like it. And I think uh, uh, Sean and John have uh, got on very well, but I think there was such a level of respect there yeah. between um, those two. Cause John Richardson's comedy mind is unbelievable. The work ethic is fucking, his IQ for for what's funny and 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 good stuff as well. I think uh, the the there title go, "What's Wrong with Me." The, there might be some people who consider that might think that's going to be a self deprecating show. Lad, your ribs. <laughs> the idea is like the a, a, a chunk of it will be here's what I think about some stuff that, and it's not a popular opinion. It's sort of a way for me to do the stand up I want to do without. But, and then I've got the caveat of, I'm admitting there's something fucking wrong with me for thinking this. Oh, so why am I thinking this? But then on top of that, there's health anxiety stuff and anxiety stuff and uh, eventually going to be a bit of childhood story as well. Um, that should all tie under that banner and hopefully with Alfie's help will be one coherent piece. What about um, another name in terms of your style recently of the, I'm going to give my opinion and I'm going to convince you I'm right. Hmm. What about a Stuart Lee? Or is that too far? Um, yeah, it's it's way too far. Slow it down to fuck. No, but I'm just because it's not going to be Stuart Lee does your show, but it'd be like the notes would be similar. Yeah, I, I, I'm not saying he'd do a bad job. I just um, there's someone there's someone else could do a better job. He's probably he, he, he's, he'd be great at directing great... Alfie. Yeah, weirdly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and more. and I think that's a good example of. It's not necessarily a chain of anyone who could direct him could direct it. Like, it doesn't work like that. It's got to be a really good fit for you. And it's a very difficult question for me to answer. Because if you'd have asked me 18 months ago, I'd have gone, I don't want to work with a fucking director. Um, Do you think this is it now? Forever? Or can you see yourself not taking... There's no harm in not doing it forever. It's made it better, so why not? Um, it. So my, my response to... My sort of attitude to Juicy when I was putting it together was, this is a one-off. I'm just going to do this show like this and never come back to it again, unless I've got another story that fits it. The reaction to it, like, it's had slightly less views than Imperius, but I've had so many more messages about it, and it's got so many more comments, and it's got so many more shares. It's not From, been out as long as Imperius, has it? No, it's like six weeks later. Um, so I can't ignore my fans going, like, this is the best thing you've done. Do more of this. I don't want to... I'd be sat on a fucking stool just doing one story in every show. But there's, I think there's a way to make a perfect monster of the style I've been working on for years and then a storytelling element that contextualizes the, the regular stand-up rather than just one big story. I can do regular stand-up and then use stories to contextualize why I'm like that. What's wrong with me? Here's what's wrong with me. Also, That's just what I'm aiming for. Like, it's a second it's pair of eyes, isn't it? How can it not? You don't have to accept the notes. No. That it's just another pair of eyes. There's a couple of notes Alfie gave me where I was like, I don't really like that. And he was like, well, let's just try it. And we did. And then he was like, yeah, you're right. That didn't work. Um, I just think as well, joke writing is just, even if you're not talking about the show, look at what uh, Gary Delaney and Sarah Milliken have done. Like it, just in terms of joke writing, having a second pair of eyes on all of the creative process, maybe not work for everyone. And I'm not saying employee writers, but Sarah Milliken and Gary Delaney together, look at the boat what they've done with in terms of stand up it's, it's about finding someone that is a invested in it and trust you and you trust yeah. so if that's you and alfie oh I. and that's what me and tony have got so 
looking forward to getting out there. I can't wait to see the jacket on there now. I'm all excited. Let's have a break. Hey, let's have a break. Hey, everyone. Now it's time to tell you about my absolute favourite sponsor. It's BetterHelp. Why are they your favourite sponsor, then? Because I think everyone should be working on their mental health. And I've started therapy recently. Now, look, I've decided that in-person works best for me. I'm going to an in-person, in-office therapist. But some people, they don't like doing that. Some people just want to do it from home, don't they? And that's where BetterHelp can help. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try because it's entirely online, designed to be convenient, it's flexible, it's suited to your schedule, isn't it? That's what you're going to say. Yeah, it's exactly what I was going to say. I was seeing a therapist. If you fill I... out just a brief questionnaire, you get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch at any time, no additional charge. But like therapy's got like specialties to it, do you know what I mean? Some people need help from one type of person. Some people need it from another type of person. You get matched with someone who matches your needs, do you know what I mean? And it's really Find important more if you balance with BetterHelp. You know what I mean? Go to betterhelp.com slash word ten and get ten percent off your first month. That's BetterHelp. Betterhelp.com slash word ten, isn't it? That's a, that's what you want to say. It's just so crucial for me because sometimes I feel like no one's listening to me. I know what you mean. That's how I feel on this podcast all the fucking time. Uh, I'll work on that with better help. Hi, Carl. You all right? <laughs> I'm fucking great, lad. How are you? He's fu- I'm fucking flying here, lad. Hey, you've got a doctor's appointment booked in for your fourth final. Do you know what, guys? Can I say this? I know we work together, but we're friends as well. And I expect a bit more support from you guys. You should have encouraged me to get an appointment or something. Do you know what? That's you on know, us. Like, lad, that, that is on us. Lad, who cares? Just yeah, stop no being soft. Oh, it's a long. Um, what was the, the tipping point that made you actually book the appointment despite months of nagging from all of us? Uh, um, I can't smell. And uh, I've gone deaf in one ear. Yeah. And um, I keep thinking about gerbils and getting aroused. So I think something might be off. Sounds like brain cancer. Though. No, it's yeah. usually hamsters. So it's just weird. Um, what really I, happened, eh? I couldn't get... I woke up last night. My toe was throbbing. And I did something I never do. I googled oh. symptoms. Oh, no. Have you been dead since 2006? I am dead. I'm legally dead. So make the most of me because I died and what did it say? 17 years ago. Mm. What did it say? Uh, it said <laughs> gout. Get out. It said oh, get out. You're going to have gout, aren't you? Of course you are. That's an old person. Bad thing. diet, cocaine, drank too much through his 20s and his 30s. Sausage like fingers VIII? incoming. Yeah. Sausage fingers. Oh, you like Henry really VIII? bad blood pressure that makes him look all blotchy like that. It's gout. <laughs> Oh my god! It's gout. Oh, you rat! <laughs> you horrible rat! That's, what I saw. That's like an online, the worst online doctor. Lads, all right, yeah, we'll do an online point. Look at your fucking face! <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're fucked. Just threw yourself off a bridge. There was a comment for you. I don't know if you saw it. What? A lady said her partner uses Femfresh as a um, a body wash, and it fucked his skin up, made it like crusty. Because women's pHs are meant to be different to men's. So if your skin is bad, it's because you're using women's. It's my vagina, Adam. Yeah. No, stop using women's products that are made for different skin. Right. Yeah, Dan. Get yourself a nice baby oil. It's not your psoriasis. Johnson's. It's fucking... Get... No, but you're not fresh. helping it. You're not helping it. So stop using it. Right, it's fucking your cool. Skin I prefer that to what you said. You just said baby oil and it made me ADHD kick off and think of something else. Um, could you get me some more Millennium Lube? Because I am out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two wanks. <laughs> I'm the only person you can get it from. <laughs> Amazon won't sell it to Adam. It's like you're not a p- proper supplier. Dan Nightingale knows. I am. Um, I've got a, a story for you, and I don't think you're going to believe me, but I swear to God, this happened last week. So I hadn't, um, I hadn't jizzed for a couple of days. I'm ready. Right. Now I've got to replace a window. I was going to say uh, I thought window as well. No, no, I came and I hit the light bulb. No. <laughs> Come on. Come on, bro. The light bulb. Did you point it up? It, it, I was just having a good time and it oh. was pointing right up and me come at the light bulb. How good? I had to wipe a light bulb. How? <laughs> I had to wipe jizz off a That's light bulb. The le- <laughs> that is the less believable part of this story, <laughs> that he, he actually it cleaned it up. <laughs> no, I did because me, uh, me missus was coming around the next day and I didn't want her to be like, is that come on the light bulb? What? Because she's seen a lot of come on light bulbs. <laughs> what, well, I, what woman would walk in the room and go, hang on. <laughs> Women are on to everything, Dan. That light bulb. Women are onto everything. On. Yeah, cheers on light bulbs. Yeah, yeah. The did smart. it drip down back onto you? Oh, it was just it like looked a like rain. It looked like the light bulb had a snotty <laughs> nose. That's the best thing I can say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a good effort then. It wasn't just like a. a it was just a like fleck. Did it wobble? 
Are you doing sea shanties all day? Did it wa- <laughs> did it dangle to and fro? Did it wobble? It was just there, uh, like. Uh, is it? Uh, have you got a, a light fixture on it, or is it just a hanging like you? you I didn't come in a light socket. I come on a light bulb. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, has the bulb, lamp shade? Has it got a shade on it? Anything? Has oh it no, no, no. What oh. do you think I am? A man who owns a really nice apartment to put some lampshades on your fucking. Nah, oh. then you just jizz on them. Yeah, you can you can wipe a you light can wipe bulb. Wipe a light bulb. You can't. <laughs> If you come on a lampshade, it's time to get a new lampshade. <laughs> there you go. That's my doctor. <laughs> Wise. Wise. So your, your foot was throbbing, now you're going to get it fixed. If you die, you know, pissed oh, off. Oh, it was killing me. I actually cut my... I, I thought I had an ingrown toenail. I had an ingrown toenail when I was 16. I got it I got it taken off on GCC results day, 1893. And <laughs> I... The pain... And I'd, I'd rather have gout than an ingrown toenail. No, you wouldn't. Gout can kill you. Yeah. No, it's not fifteen twenty three. I'll be all right. Well, no, I can just stop eating all the shit I'm eating. I'll be fine. Yeah, but then you're left with. Oh, that sounds no like a lovely food. life. Yeah. Yeah. What? What are you going to eat? You yeah, fussy as it is. I could eat loads healthier Aubergines. than I'm eating now. I've just ordered shoe my for lunch. Do you know what I mean? I could make some better what life foot choices. Are you? Like if you're playing footy, are you left oh, or right? Oh shit! Foot? Yeah, England. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> are you oh, left or right? Man, if Luke Shaw goes down, what are they going to do? Are you left or right? Footed. Right. Okay. So you can still take a free kick. Right, yeah, right. it's the fine. Doctor said that. No heavy machinery, but you can take free kicks. You people curl it over the wall, doctor. And you fucking lose the will to live. Maybe that'd help. Oh, can we play football soon? I'd love a kick around. I played for the first time in months at the weekend. Got an assist from in goal. Just oh, yeah. bad deb. Allison. Yeah, it was route one. Um, run corner invited us down to use their pitch, and their pitch is wonderful. The run corn, the run yeah. corn line. Yeah, it's a it's a mixture of um, real grass and artificial, so it's Ooh. like a, car- wow. a carpet. Because in real, it's a mixture of rock <laughs> and dry, <laughs> dry mud glass. Yeah. So we can go there and use. Shane their Todd asked me to arrange a have a word versus tea with me charity match. Yeah, we said that. Well, let's do I'd it. I'd love that. Yeah. Those Northern Irish boys get fucking right into it, though, don't they? Yeah, but, but like... We'd fucking yeah. smoke them. All you have to do is take Shane out at the knees early on and then probably going to be all right. All right, see you there. So when is your doctor's... Are we doing that in Belfast? That's it, Munkon. When's your doctor's appointment? It's at 12 minutes past nine tomorrow morning. Is it? First appointment of the day, that? Uh, no, the first appointment was 6.45 and they can shove that up their ass. What? It's an online consultation uh... with... Doctor McSwanny. So it's a FaceTime with the doctor, basically. Doctor's gonna go, hello mate, let me see your foot mate. Yes, fucked mate. You need some ointment, mate. <laughs> ointment. <laughs> Rub it on your foot, but what are you gonna do about your blotchy face, you <laughs> fucking idiot? <laughs> Stop eating the shoe my and doing the cocaine, isn't it? Going Colombian. What would you do if he goes, right, I've seen your foot. I need to see one more thing. Get your cock out. Now one of my, the reason I've gone for the online appointment is because I'm at the age where m- my bum can get fingered real easily by a professional. You've never been fingered? I've, I'm, That's awful at your age. I'm, I'm, haven't I'm, they stopped doing that? I'm unfingered. No. I thought they, they had like a, like a thing. Like a oh, new, yeah, the rising prostate, prostate cancer and men thing. What did they was do? Like, eh, we're just going to stop checking. That way the numbers will go down. <laughs> no, no, no. But I think they've got like a scanner now. No, doctors it, are not get, giving up the, the <laughs> one opportunity to have for fun, are they? Yeah, fair. You're not yeah. going to get doctors to sign a waiver going, I'm not fingering men anymore. Are you, are you joking? Do you not think they might want to give one bit of joy in the NHS staff's life is I'm a doctor. Yeah, I work fucking 14 hour shifts. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm getting divorced. I don't see me kids anymore because I'm trying to save lives. But you know what? Once every three weeks, I get to finger a man and it makes it all worth it. Right. And that's what they live for, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I miss the kids, but look at this fucking old asshole. <laughs> Not a young man's arsehole. No interest. I want a 40-year-old's arsehole with an RIP runty tattoo. Can you Can't get, even see this guy's dick. Can you get <laughs> fingered, please? That's making me up. I'm a bit anxious now. You're too old. So oh, I'm... my God. You Is that like... going to help my complexion as well? <laughs> you got life Bitch. insurance for the company today. <laughs> <laughs> He's, really <laughs> He's really bothered by that. I'm fucking annoying. He's really bothered. You rat. Uh, Joe, you got life insurance <laughs> for the company. Are we, one of your, are we your trustees? Yeah. Are we? Yeah, if I die, you get a chunk. And then you got to do the right thing. Don't call her that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can leave Amentata, that in if you by want. The way, Amentata. So it's within our interest for you to die. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, fuck it then. Quite a lot as well. I know, I've seen the policy. Yeah, yeah. I've got the same policy. 
Yeah, so it's also good if you die. Yeah, I don't worry. Why don't we have a suicide pact, all three of us, and we all get money? <laughs> well, then Finn's fucking minted. <laughs> That's your pod nephew. Do I get anything? Yeah, yeah. We've yeah. signed you up. Yeah. Did so, you not tell you? No. You uh, inherit the whole company. Yes. Shut up, Finn. <laughs> You're just you and some Noel Gallagher tribute act here next week. Oh, no, do you like guitars? I fucking love guitars. You're back to Salford Uni. <laughs> on that, listen to Have A Word Sounds on Patreon. Oh, <laughs> great plug. Finn's got an extra part. Have you got any questions? I do have questions. Ask them then. Thanks for that, do. Carl. Cheers. You're doing some good producing recently. I'm well, the best. well done. I'm the best at it. Thank you. Well done. Um, so, this is <laughs> from... <laughs> I don't need you to say it. Is it damn nice that looks on Carl, that like Barcelona kit? But like if, if that right. was like an Everton top, you'd just be like, what are you doing? Yeah. No, I'm not a one with the Sp Spotify sponsor, but it I is. Know, I like it. Oh, I think it I like sick. it. I'm I'm not, not, like not, it. I'm not, I'm not like it. And I don't usually like I agree. I, I like it. I saw Millwall playing against Blackburn at the weekend. That was a good game, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, they're sponsored by Husky Chocolate. And they're just weirdly, I quite like that sponsor. I just don't know what, like, I quite like that Millwall kit. The sponsors aren't. As good as they used to be. They don't but look as good. No, lower no, league, really. you're more likely to get a stink. Like Blackburn are sponsored by Impromptu Totally top Wicked. Five. What's your top five football shirt sponsors ever? I immediately, right to the top, I'm going O2 yeah. on the and Arsenal kit. Number two I think, yeah, course. we said, said, what? Number two is, of course. JVC. No. JVC did look good. Pirelli. Oh, Pirelli. Are we, yeah. going, are we going worldwide? Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Cl Club America set. in Mexico. Oh, I liked it. It oh, yeah. looked better than post, I think. Mate, is it Club America? Yeah. yeah. What are they yeah, called? Yeah, yeah. They we're, actually we're, got Coca-Cola. We uh, seven up on Fiorentina. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. No, it's felt as well. It was gorgeous. Yeah. Pirelli. Nintendo on... on Nintendo looked cool on that. Here, son. On what? that. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Nintendo looked good on, on Fiorentina. Siemens looked good on Magenta. Your man's face. Hey! Oh. Mama like that. Mama like that. You can that. have that on. But at yeah. the end of the day, I there fuck your mum regularly, so. Uh, uh, it's, he, uh, he wanted that too I much. I regularly fuck your mum to completion, so think about that next time you want to make a joke. Yeah. I will think about that, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was a light touch. <laughs> Listen, it's either your face or that fucking bulb. Make a choice. Uh, O2 is up there, though. Gorgeous, that kit. I had the blue one, me. I thought Sharp looked good on the old Man United kits. Looks, I know that's going to go. Smart, that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Right. This Baxi, Preston North End, 1994, 95. Blau punked Watford, 92, oh, 93. Yeah, I like Blau It's my favourite ever Watford kit. The Hummel, 92, 93. I fucking love that. In fact, I need to buy the home kit because I've got the away. I think that'll be And it doesn't rare, fit rare. me and it never will. But shit. my God. Candy and crown paints on the field kits look great. Yeah. Especially prefer, in post. Prefer candy. I've got, so I need to do something with my football tops. They're nev never getting worn. What's the best, uh, like, logo? Is it, a, is it a classic? Flamengo. Is it just the, the classic Adidas one? Is it the one that says Nike? What one? Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you meant Club Crest. Oh, no, no. I mean like... My favourite retro this? Club Crest is either the Juventus one. No, you're talking about this. The yeah, no. Or the old PSG one with the Eiffel Tower in. But sponsor. I prefer the Adidas, but with Adidas written under the three with staggered the old, stripes. With the old logo or with the three... You mean the classics? The one that looks like a triangle. Not originals. Right, that's okay. Different. Yeah, that's the, 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 the originals are different to do this. Yeah. yeah. The triangle looking one. Solid yeah, Nike. I like a solid Nike. I like a Nike with the Nike. Just a with it written. Nike. I love the old Adidas classics. That flamingo top you bought me. Jesus. Adidas. <laughs> We've done this before, though. Ah, yeah, no. God, I know. Any questions? Yes, tops. this is from Capel Pow. Oh! Ooh. Stupid couple, 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 pow. So, Wag Wag Lids, if you could only go to one supermarket for the rest of your life, which would it be? Okay. Whichever you pick would be near your oh. house so distance doesn't come into it, but the prices would stay the same. Asda. Asda? I'm a Tesco man. I think Asda shared Tesco shit on Asda, you know? It doesn't. It just doesn't. I think Asda's maybe the worst, in yeah. my opinion. I'm a, I'm a big Tesco I like the pizza guy, making bit, though. Asda's so far ahead of Tesco that it's embarrassing for both of you. For what, Dan? Dan? What's just happened? Everything. I went to Asda and ordered a pizza and forgot. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. That oh was Friday God. last week. Bad complexion, no thought and dementia. <laughs> go back in and go. What a bad day for you. <laughs> yeah, go, can you go and collect it today? Go back in and go, where's my pizza? <laughs> I'm not having back. this. <laughs> Five days old. <laughs> Shit. Oh, fuck. I asked for half cheese as well. Oh, God. Fuming. 
Uh, I'm a Tesco guy. Sainsbury's. I the club card. I know where everything is in the shop. Oh, fuck the club card. You got for quality, don't you? It's all the same stuff. All right. Uh, well, the M&S place, is, is, the, is the go-to one. Man, really I love the Sainsbury's. The food. Yeah. M&S is, the food yeah. is so much it's better. It's light years ahead. The bread and M&S. You can't do your big shop at Marks and Spencer's. Why you not? can't do your proper everything Why? big shop, can you? Why? Yeah. Mm. You get everything nah. there. If I, if I go to Cook if I said that, in, I get in Liverpool now at home, I go to M&S. M&S's Church food Street. is light years ahead of everything else. It is, but, but obviously the prices yeah, are the too. Prices. Cheshire Oaks Sainsbury's has become my favourite. It's near my house. No one, I love Sainsbury's. No one going to go do they, for... Do they run that like ones? an outlet store? Is it like steaks <laughs> that are like too big or too small? What do you mean? <laughs> they got it. Oh yeah, the Cheshire Oaks. I was like, <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to have a look at the steaks. Um, Finn said we like any of the... the what did you call them? The foreign ones, like foreign? Aldi, Lidl. No? Aldi's, you know, solid, but I'll, not, I'll never go there. I drive Don't, past it and go, that's solid. Aldi, Aldi's the one I go to. But doesn't everyone just go to that because of the cost? No one, is everyone choosing Aldi? A lot of people do. I, now, I, like, they have a, I like Aldi. It's better for the veg. I like to get served. That's what I got Who's told. That? Your mum. L- little like little oh, bakery's your decent. Bed. Your mum doesn't sound anything like that. What does she sound like? This is how your mouth sounds. Because she's dead. If anyone <laughs> didn't miss that. Yeah. She has deceased. <laughs> Too much cum. So da- Dan, and the- <laughs> it was vodka actually. <laughs> no, it was a- that's how she mixed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, come here. <laughs> oh, oh. <a> seasoning. <laughs> On, uh, <laughs> how are you cleaning that bulb? <laughs> On the underrated, overrated, it says the little bakery. So you've brought it up. Would you say that's an underrated? <laughs> it is underrated. It's decent. Anywhere that sells salted pretzels. Little bakery. Listen, as a gout sufferer, I'm telling you right now, salted, <laughs> massive salted pretzels will give you that mm, extra lumpy foot. Why are you going to little bakery? That's so sad. There's a bakery at the back of Little that is, I think, one of the best bits of Little. Little's all right. One of the best bits. It's in the top five bits of Little. <laughs> There's the bakery, there's the aisles, there's the tills. Top five the light. little bits. <laughs> <laughs> the exit. Shout so, out everyone who knows the little bakery. So you're going Tesco, you're going Asda. Asda, 100%. You're going Sainsbury's. I think so, yeah. I'm going Aldi, so we're all going for different But then again, shit. I am actually going M&S, but that's dead. I can't, like, <laughs> the working class man in me <laughs> yes. can't say M&S. But, but Emma, it's the only one for the rest of your life. Asda. Oh, Tesco. Asda. But if I say to Sarah, I'll actually do an M&S shop. She's in the car before I've finished the sentence. <laughs> Shut up. I just want a massive one. I'll take, honestly. Sarah is in the car before you finish the sentence. You could check it in there, you know. Let's go and do an M&S for some with three other women. <laughs> <laughs> she can still say no. I'm in the car. Though. Oh, God. <laughs> you shouldn't let me finish. No, no, no. <laughs> Lock them doors. Come on. <laughs> this is not you driving. This is you milking the tits or two with the other women. Nice. Lovely imagery. <laughs> Lovely. It's true, though, isn't it? A, a huge supermarket with everything. Asda's fine. Tesco's fine. You have to know where it all is as well. Yeah, but I you... know my Tesco inside <laughs> out. You know it, Tesco. Yeah, we've said that isn't your regular oh, Tesco. Awful. I know, oh. where, I know where the kidney beans are in my Tesco and the teriyaki seasoning. <laughs> I will give you under. What are you making? <laughs> are you taking the piss out of me for little bakery? <laughs> oh, kidney beans! Fucking <laughs> little bakery. We're having teriyaki kidney beans this season, I love. <laughs> we make a chili one night and we'll make a chicken dish the next. Slender world banter. Just saying, I'll give you the under quid to go and find them two items within an hour. That's a ball, like, it? <laughs> You're allowed to ask people. Yeah, but they don't know. Oh, Men don't well. like asking. What? Have you ever, have you asked someone who works in one of, in any shop? Like, do you know the way like taxi drivers used to have to know the way? Like you get in a taxi, you'd be like, we're going to this address. And they just had to know where they were going. And now it's not like that because they've got a map or whatever. And they don't know where they're going at all. They just follow the map. Now, supermarket workers and also high street workers, you can go to them and go, excuse me, have you got any of these in a different size? And they look at you <laughs> like you've given them a Sudoku to do. They're like, no, I don't know if I can help with that. We don't even sell them. Yeah. That's uh, olives. A big boots pharmacy, if you, like, I don't see the point in searching. If you don't know the boots, I just ask someone. And then, yeah, sometimes you just, there's two of you lost. No, I'd rather get lost for 15 minutes and then ask. Yeah. No, I'm all right. I think I just... Like, ask. I'm up and down the aisles, the same aisle four times, and I'll ask... I feel like I have to have a go first. It's a challenge. Yeah. 
looking for Asian greens yesterday. Asian veg. Just <clears throat> Amazon are going to bum everyone's <laughs> head in, aren't they? They're just going to be like, I'll tell you what, why don't you just order it here? <laughs> yeah. Right. Any, any so, more correspondence? So, yes, this is from Josh Lee. Wag Wag Lids just heard a story in another podcast about a guy who won a bet hiding a shit in a shared house without it being found. Turns out he melted the butter, shit in the tub, and put the bu- butter back in the fridge. My question is, so, if you had to bag. hide a shit <laughs> in Have A Word HQ and it not be found for 24 hours by the others, Dead easy. where would Inside you an hide envelope it? with our name on the front of it. <laughs> 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 It'd be there for months. <laughs> What's that smell? <laughs> <laughs> Any letter to this company? Mate, there's no extra, there's no extras for that question. <laughs> Carl's headlined that question and he's so spot on. Right, okay. So Declan Thompson says, <laughs> Hi Lids. Um <laughs> Hi Lids. Uh Deck and Georgia here. Double Oh act. no. Yep. What? You shared a Facebook as well, I bet. I don't know. It feels oh, like it stinks. You know. uh, Georgia and Deck forever loves <laughs> Riley Smith. We went to the restaurant special. It was absolutely oh. class. So our question is: Oh, they were the, they were they came out drinking with me and Ishan and Jamie. Deck uh, Georgia from Worcester. I came out. You love really, your saw scale. <laughs> She's a very attractive lady. He's lovely as well. Yeah. Were they the ones I nicked the churro off? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's okay. she's lovely. Right. He's really they de- they are so. Who would you sound. rather kiss? Uh, Georgia. <laughs> that is the That's question. On the face. Whose genitals would you rather have in and around your mouth? Oh, Dex. I've got gout. Oh, imagine if you've got gout. <laughs> I've not got long to live. I might as well suck a dick from Worcestershire. That was a thing I just said out loud to a microphone. Oh, and that was it. Don't worry about that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> A, a two kilogram cock falling off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. Practicing for deck. Right. <laughs> Our question is, um, if if you lads had to create an entirely new business other than the restaurant, since you've already done it, what would it be? And which comics are you hiring to be your staff? Go car track. <laughs> and who are you hiring? No one. It's just me. <laughs> no, I'm not even invited. I just want to go car track. Yeah. <laughs> go car it's got to be something where people can't die because I just don't think. Axe to that one. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> wow. Gun range. Two weeks we'd be open. Um, um, what about golf? What about a golf course? I just don't think it's, uh, you know, it's not a game to, that's easy to break into. People have got their courses. I think we've got. Horses. I think it's a bar, isn't it? It's a bar with like music and comedy. Yeah. That's a, that's a where nice would idea. you put that? Manchester. What? Manchester. Probably. Yeah, right. If you were opening a bar with a club in. That's yeah. interesting. Manchester. Worcester. I've got a, by the way, just so you know, we, we, we've we been spitballing the idea of maybe one day owning some sort of bar, comedy club venue. I've come up with an idea for the name of it. Go on. Adam Rose. Oh, yeah. Talk us to him. <laughs> Talk, yeah. <laughs> Wait, Go on. Yeah. How did you get your inspiration Plus for that? support. Oh. Adam Rowe and acquaintances. <laughs> one Adam day you Rowe might be partners. partners. Oh, can't oh. we call the inappropriate gentleman? <laughs> the inappropriate uh, gentleman. That's actually really good. The inappropriate gentleman's club. That's actually really good. That does. Seem Adam like Rose inappropriate. Gentleman. That <laughs> sounds like a stripper. Yeah. Hey, and all the other strip clubs, you don't get to touch them or finger them or anything. <laughs> Not here at the inappropriate gentleman's. You can spit on them. It's just an extra tenner. It's Adam Rose inappropriate gentleman's club. There's the business. A strip club. Right. We open a have a weird strip club. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I can't see any problems online with that. Why? What do you mean? They're all consent and adults. What's the problem? What, in terms of our sex reputation? Sex work is real work, Dan. No, it's not sex work. It's just dancey work. <laughs> 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 I'm not a sex worker. I'm a dancer worker. I just dance with my biff. <laughs> <laughs> we get like Hal Crutton on the pole. <laughs> oh, it's comics, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we're staffing it. Right. Oh, right. Oh, hang on. It's a strip club with you're comedians the ca- the doing the dancing. Oh, Male strip club. Yeah, yeah, Women yeah. love all that, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they normally only get them for like their bachelorette parties now, but you know what I'm saying? Oh, Barry Dodds with his fucking <laughs> lad out. Yes. Howie. <laughs> is what he'd say. <laughs> you know, because he's from Newcastle. <laughs> Look at my fucking cock. Bouncing around. 
<laughs> you know, because he's had a stroke. Because I, wow. I haven't got a fucking it's hair on my body. Uh, Adam's having a fucking stroke. Floss master Let's hope nuts. it doesn't affect his fucking complexion. <laughs> nah, dirty bastard. <laughs> he'd be, be Flockmaster Nuts, wouldn't he? Oh, DJ Flockmaster Nuts in the house with me, dick out, Lake. <laughs> wow. What's he He's got a microphone. <laughs> yeah. He likes the music. <laughs> Hello, ladies. I'm a naked DJ. Oh, a what? <laughs> Paddy and Molly on the door. You're the cat mother. What's a, what's a cat mother? The old, like the stable of horses, yours. <laughs> <laughs> Nay. <laughs> No meow. <laughs> so stupid. What other strippers can we get? Jamie Hutchinson is the closer on that, isn't he? Ooh. Yeah, he gets the money in, mate. Grounds for the he can divorce. Be asked, Ricky. Yeah. Firing ping pong balls out of his <laughs> Jamie can get, pull some cock. stuff out of his ass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cock? Out of his <laughs> cock? Cock? <laughs> it's cock. I could get a ping pong ball in my foreskin. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Luckily, you're working the bar. No, the sexy bar as well, isn't it? Everyone's going to be sexy. You know, you're all doing this. I'm not a sex worker. We're all dancing to Chelsea Dagger at all times. I'm just a sexy dancer. Hello. <laughs> London's calling. <laughs> that's not sex. That's not Chelsea Dagger. Oh, no, that's the jam. <laughs> hey, look at me fucking knob. Do, 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 do. Give us a tenner tip, I'll put me knob away. <laughs> <laughs> Keep throwing money at him. He'll put his clothes on. <laughs> oh, a reverse strip club. You come in. <laughs> it's the clash. Oh, club. Sorry, clash. It's the clash. Sorry, I got confused. Yeah, foot and like my tits. No, we'll give us a tenner. I'll put them back on. There's a cash point at the front door. You'll <laughs> fucking need it because some of these lads are in bad condition. Hundred pounds. Dan, put your. Is <laughs> that English? What was that word? So many little A hundred pounds because some of these lads are in bad condition. Oh, back, is it back in I know I'm fucking trying with me, Jordy Lee. <laughs> Different fucking start with me, like I'll fucking I'll go mental. <laughs> I'll go wow. proper fucking strippers. Mental. There you go. The inappropriate gentlemen's club and it's just men Ooh, strippers. And they pay you to put your clothes on. <laughs> oh yeah. Who's the big closer? Me with my gout. No, you're like, the like, you know those bars where it's like free drinks for women. You heard of this? It's quite common in like Dubai in the Middle East. Free drinks for women all night, but so no the, rights. I'm on your side. <laughs> so the girl, <laughs> <laughs> so the girls go because they get to get drunk, and the men go and pay like extortionate prices for drinks because there's a lot of women there drinking for free. We do the opposite. Free drinks for men all night. Oh. oh. Get Get the women. The women are enticed by Barry Dodgers' cock and <laughs> all the eligible gentlemen. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're closed on match days, but apart from that, <laughs> free drinks for men. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a really smart move because women love loads of men. It's famous. <laughs> when a, a couple of girls go out dancing, they want to be totally outnumbered by men. <laughs> Just Trump literally for. round and going, win, win, win. <laughs> Paid fucking 11 pounds for a gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah, great idea, smart. That's how we diversify this fucking business, mate. Yeah, it's equality. The do you want equality? Right, should we do a couple underrated, overrated? And <laughs> <laughs> have a break. <sighs> oh. <laughs> yeah, go on. Press the jingle, Dan. Oh, yeah. oh. Who's that from, Carl? Camera, Carl. Uh, this is from Goat, uh, Instagram Goat, Naomi Mitchell. Have Naomi. we scanned that? Uh, we haven't scanned that. Oh, there's a scam on the back. Let's have a I'm look. guessing it's from the business to make more money. Um, Naomi Mitchell. Naomi sent this. Is, uh, is, she got onto us because she was a fan of Vittorio. And then we got Vittorio Angolone on, and uh, she came to your tour show. She came to mine. Yep. She's fucking great. She shares everything. Absolute legend of a pod and comedy fan. Yep. She's so supportive of so many podcasts, but particularly <laughs> ours. And Carl is now rubbing his balls on. <laughs> you all right? Carl. Right. If I have to do it any longer, you're going to start calling me Robin Vamp and Percy. Robin would have been better. Um, this is from Naomi Mitchell. Thanks, Naomi. I didn't know what you said, so 
She's just just she shares it up. every and she makes boss little things on Instagram like little um she's great panels of us all. She's we appreciate boss. you sharing stuff on your socials so much. 100%. It's all good liking, but the share is so important, especially on Instagram stories because it takes effort. So the first one is from John O. Barkley, and this is alcohol free beer. Overrated or underrated? I've never drunk it. I've it's overrated. It. I just like I have one every now and then. But if you're not drinking, just don't drink. Do you know Some when you coke? when you were having your sober uh, six weeks? Yeah, six weeks. Were you ever tempted to go on the alcohol free beer? Is that like a gateway drug? It it just makes me want to be it. I think. Does it taste different? I don't, I don't know. But. It does taste a little bit different. They're getting a lot better. There's some that like you can barely notice the difference, but you don't get the buzz. So yeah. it's just. I, I tell you, weed free gummies are nice. <laughs> They're good. <laughs> I, I've, I've been eating had, them since I was a kid. Them. They're really nice. What's the point of alcohol? Is it just to help people who are maybe... Addicted? Yeah, having some time off or Some just... people just want the flavour. Yeah. As I'm saying, so is it helping people who are maybe... Uh, shouldn't be drinking as much as they are? Yeah. Maybe, but I, I mean, I, I, I think they're overrated. I think I, most of the time, there's always... Every now and then it's different, but most of the time, if I'm not drinking, I'll just have a Diet Coke or a Coke or... It seems a bit seedy then, doesn't it? Like, oh, you don't want to drink beer no more. Drink stuff that tastes like beer so you don't forget about us. Yeah. Seems a bit I've fucking never, seedy. Never drunk them. When you think about it. I do want to try the Guinness one. Just Guinness Zero now. And I do want to try that. Just, I'm intrigued. Yeah. Do they do it on draft? Or is yeah, it just it's only the, draft. Oh, right, okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. I'd have thought it'd be a can thing. Is it no. the same glass? Or is yeah. it like a 0% glass? Well, that's good, I suppose, if you drink with your mates and you don't want to drink and you don't look like... Yeah, like and you can sort of... pour a beer out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think we're too far away from alcohol-free draft as well. I think that'll be coming soon if it's not already there. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, sweet. So this next one's from Gackle, and that is music festivals. Overrated or underrated? They're overrated, aren't they? Like, they are overrated because people get dead excited about them, but in reality, you do just think of shit in the field for like four days. I think the, the lineups have become so diversified Bad. that you can't you can't go to one and go oh every single person on this stage i want to see yeah. i didn't enjoy our day at leeds festival i enjoyed watching the arctic monkeys yeah, but we the day there. was a bit like yeah because there was not enough for us to do there yeah glastonbury yeah. is i've never been and obviously it looks incredible it has to be overrated the way people i talk do about want it. to go to yeah i will go but i was like Oh, like it'll change your life you've never yeah, been i'd love to go to to glastow but uh, maybe that's overrated a little bit because it doesn't people, appeal to me loads. Having, having like done it. a couple, I'm like, I feel like I've done it. I suppose some it's like anything, and it's some people absolutely buzz off being outdoors and camping. If you I'm the, not that arsed about camping full stop. Yeah. So then to camp with 15,000 other cunts who all start throwing bottles because they're fucking hammered on the Sunday afternoon, that would just do my head. I feel like I did it when I was younger. But now if you, I'm like, I reckon I'm all if you're right. early 20s, late teens with a group of your mates, it probably doesn't get much better than that. That's oh, V98 was fucking quality. Who was yeah. on? The Saturday was not great. Saturday. The Saturday was... <laughs> the Saturdays? The Saturdays <laughs> weren't great. Um, the Sunday was uh, Iggy Pop, Green Day, um, the Seahorses, and... <laughs> Who are these people? The Verve. Yeah, I've just seen, I've seen the lineup. Oh, the it Sunday, looks good. the Sunday. The Saturday looked all right. No. Charlatans, Texas, Stereophonics, Robbie, uh, Robbie Williams. Yeah, Robbie Williams. It was just just out of take that. No, it was fine. Saturday was all right. We got right in the mix Robbie for the Williams Sunday. Williams sings one of my favourite songs ever. It's called what? Something Beautiful. Oh, that's a banger. Mm. Isn't that with um, who's the girl in it? No, Nicole Kidman. Isn't no. it? No. no, he just sings, sings it on his own. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Get man. Oh, I thought he was a girl. Get me. Something stupid. Something stupid. You'd, you'd have loved the Sunday. Yeah. I've it showed you the great. best festival I went to. Apart from Chumba Wumba, who were a fucking disgrace. Let's get them for the arena. Sounds, Sounds like a slayer against fat people. <laughs> yeah. Dog shit. Chumba Wumba shite. The, the, when I went to the Isle of Wight, that was up there with some of the, like, it's got to be one of the best lineups ever. Your your run, yeah, your run of outrageous. three headliners was great. Um, right. The next one. <laughs> oh, Green Day got a lad from uh, Sheffield called Johnny Up to sing and play guitar and he had green hair and you could tell it was you know the uh, Dave bit where oh, Alex so good. where Ali gets Alex up yeah. which is so fucking watchable we've mentioned it before but Johnny from Sheffield came up and he was the biggest Green Day fan you could just tell and um, Billy Horrid? Billy no, no Billy I don't know what the lead what singer's called name? Billy Ray Cyrus Billy Joe 
Billy yeah. Zane. Armstrong. Um, got him up. And I like I like Green Day, but you could tell the guy had just reached the peak of his existence and yeah. it would never be matched. Well, we sang with five at the arena, so how do we beat that? I was in five. Matt. <laughs> Four for the for No, because Carl was in them as well. We were, me and Adam well, completed you, five. Yeah. Then we were about 27, weren't they? No, because we had mics in the middle of them. Yeah. We were actually front and centre doing the dance moves. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly behind. <laughs> There's a gif of a Bevan Cena. Make that into a gif. <laughs> Who is it? Um, sorry, I forgot your name on Twitter. You're the, goat, you're the gif goat. Can't remember your name. Sorry. Make that. Go on. Right. Last one, and then we'll have a break. This is from Charlie. <laughs> Overrated or underrated? Foot jobs. Well, fucking someone's feet. <laughs> yeah. I think Probably. they're probably underrated. I've never done it, but I can see the appeal. Are you a foot man? What do you mean? Like, I've got feet. <laughs> oh, cool. Have I'm you got any feet, Dan? <laughs> Dan's got a massive foot. <sighs> Are I'm, you gonna have, I'm, gonna have, I'm not going to have two for long. Um, <laughs> do feet turn you on? They are a sexy part of a woman's body. I, do, I don't mind having like a woman's foot in my mouth. Huh? Yeah, in that, yeah, in yeah. that position. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I prefer nearly every other part of a body, though. No, a, a woman's foot is quite sexy when... Yeah. In your mouth? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'd rather have a foot in my mouth than knees. A oh, whole foot or a couple of toes. Oh, mate, it's in relegation <laughs> trouble. <laughs> yeah, it's a couple of toes. Yeah. Oh, really? Like, with the arms? Better than the feet? In your mouth. <laughs> you right? How big's your mouth? Open your mouth, girl. Isn't that what you just said? Yeah, no. Feet are quite sexy. There's a reason a foot fetish is massive. And feet yeah. in your mouth in a certain position can is sexy biting the toes and shit. <laughs> it is? No. Uh, no, it doesn't do foot stuff doesn't. Give it a go, mate. Yeah, I don't so, mind. Yeah, yeah. Laura's always asking me to nibble on her feet. She's like, I can't find the clippers. Come on. Mm -hmm. oh, no, that's, that's all disgusting. Disgusting. Suck the big oh, toe ban. Who are you? Um, no, I'm not. Foot, feet, not. Go on, then list your body parts then, in order of how What, that I'd rather have in my mouth? No, of like, attractiveness. Bum. Face, number one. Face, Dan, come on. You want bum before pussy? <laughs> <laughs> I always go bum before pussy. A bumpy ride. I go vagina, mouth, arsehole, face, in that order. No face. What do you mean? I said attractiveness. <laughs> pussy. Oh, I thought you meant what I'd like to fuck. That is the same thing to you. What do you find attractive? Uh, intelligence, personality, um, you know, pussy. political beliefs, <laughs> and then pussy and arsehole. <laughs> but you're so clever and you lean slightly to the left and you have a really tight bum hole. So Marry me. Oh, go on. Let's, let's take face out of it because we've all got beautiful women. Here's this week's top five. What are you going for? <laughs> bum. Bum is over pussy, yeah? And boobs. Oh, yeah, are you going, going bum hole or are you going legs? Legs is at the top for me. Cheeks. Really? I'm going boobies, mate. Like a good <laughs> pair of legs with a tattoo on them. Oh. Oh, you're a tattooed leg yeah, guy, yeah? wrap them round my head. Wrap them round my head and put my face right in the middle of that. Where my pussy like Ray Mysterio. Oh, you see, yeah, you've brought someone else into it, haven't you? <laughs> I think uh, legs have been dope in there. What? Um, well, because you, you started with legs, but then it ended where you actually wanted to be. <laughs> Yeah, but I would, I would rather go down on a woman who's got legs. <laughs> <laughs> that is disgusting. As a soon-to-be amputee, <laughs> I am disgusted by that. Rather, I can no, say he that. Said, he says rather. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I don't, I'm not saying I wouldn't. Oh, I'm God. saying it's better It'd if be you. Fucking easy. <laughs> anyway, bum for me. <laughs> From and position. if they're attached to legs, great. If that bum's attached to legs, fine. But not a must. Um, <laughs> smell. <laughs> Can we Damn, need a break? The boobies for me. I'm going boobies number one. A boobies? Yeah. I'm going to put face on boobies. I'm a booby man, me. I don't know. Sexy, sexy. I'm not asked about bit. Like if you, if there's a person who's sexy, none of that counts for when you just go fuck your heart. Yeah, but feet is. I'm saying for fetish is a thing. It's never on my list. No, it's not. I'm, but I'm saying I get it. I get it. It's not my big thing, but I get it. Yeah. But I've never wanted to fuck anyone's elbows. <laughs> <laughs> Game one, trying to do banter. That was great. Yeah, because you're that's, so... That's my favourite bit of this podcast. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. I mean, you're absolutely right, but I can't be arse fucking ad-libbing. Let's have a break. Hey, you! 
podcast on a little break here, isn't it? There's nothing for you to listen to. So why don't you do us a favor while we're on a break? Like this if you're on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel if you're on YouTube. Leave a comment. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review with a nice little comment. If you're listening on Spotify, leave us a five-star review with a nice little comment. Follow no. us online, all our socials, at Have A Word Pod. Give us share a follow. Stuff. If yeah, you see yeah, a video, yeah, yeah. like it and share it. It costs you nothing. It makes the world a difference it. to us, you know what I mean? Don't be, a dick Don't be sly. It. Share it, you fucking lit. Don't be a fucking rat. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike Rice is here. Mike Rice is Mike in King. the studio. Oh, hello. Oh, it's always rat. good. Oh, rat. Always good to sing some uh, really strong Mike, Irish. You, uh, I'm talking, ha. you rude cunt. Come on now. I was literally talking and you started talking. I was bored though. What the <laughs> fuck? What? Sort this out. This is getting bad. Is it? No, it's funny when it's a joke, but like, You're I was literally- You've had a drink, you know? I was no, literally on, talking. Yeah, go on, finish then. We're all waiting. Awful <laughs> fucking cunt. Well, Get no. the therapist to sort this out. My therapist said no, that you were trying to stifle me. She never gets a word in. <laughs> Adam, can we talk about- Yeah, yeah, we can talk about you. Keep your fucking mouth shut. <laughs> Do you have a therapist, Adam? Do you? Started last week, yeah. Oh, fuck. I have a, I have a lad as well. We haven't nil heard up. anything about it. He's I'm not. He's, he's never. He's very shy. Uh, really? Mike Rice is here. <laughs> dirty old town. The dirty old town. Um, dirty Come out town. deep like a dance. Come Before on. we started Mike, recording, like, on. Mike, you were telling us your opinions on the toxic state of Irish politics, and I was wondering whether you cared to expand. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, you were singing them. What? <laughs> you were singing a lot of those opinions. Well, I was, yeah. Yup Sinn Féin. Huh? Yup Sinn Féin. Sinn Féin, uh, Sinn Féin are going to get the power, and that, then you're all in trouble. <laughs> you're in trouble, me. And you're in big trouble, you soup eating fuck. I'm a Republican. Fuck. Huh? I eat soup. Yeah. What's that make me? Uh, uh, a coward. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I hate the Tories so much, I'd take Sinn Fein. Yeah. What, what harm could that do? Let's fuck, fuck the Tories. Bring them back, the light bulb. there are. Yeah. Are they standing in Cheshire, Sinn Fein? Huh? <laughs> they, uh, yeah, well, they, 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 they would do their best, yeah. yeah. They'll come anywhere. <laughs> and Like anywhere, they're just fucking. <laughs> That's... Taking the pictures off the smoke packs, so you don't feel guilty when you smoke them. You what? Jim Payne. And they're getting the old uh, leprosy, leprosy Lucas A back. <laughs> <laughs> the leprosy oh. Lucas A. <laughs> <laughs> it was took off the shelves. So fizzy, you'll lose a limb. Yeah. Um, um, you're having a little beer there. You're both having a I beer. Oh, mine's is gone. Just, yeah. I'm trying to get myself, I just got a new medication and it, 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 it like G's me up. So now I'm like, I took that and now I'm fucking zoned. What's oh, the really? medication for? What's the problem? What you, what you got going on? Oh, the fuck these antidepressants. Cause just cause I wasn't sleeping and the doctor wouldn't give me sleeping pills. Why? Because he was like, because he's just a cunt. They're just, they, you know, he was just a rotten bastard. I says, <laughs> I says, just give me fucking sleeping pills. That's what I've come here for. And he was like, he was like, what's the problem? I was like, that, none of your business was the problem. <laughs> Rude. Just give me the, give me the pills. <laughs> what? You know what yeah. But it's none of it. Well, why is that his? I've just come in here. Give me the pills. It's like if you go in. I thought, have you ever, I don't know if you've ever gone in to get a, a Viagra or anything and they're like, and they're like, what's the problem? Are you I don't need me? it. I get too many erections, if anything, Mike. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Oh, they come fuck. in uh, unfortunate times. Yeah. yeah. Like where now? In the bank. You got one in the bank? Yeah. Would you nudge it into the person in front of your queue? No, no, no. But like, I, you I, get served quicker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think it's a gun? <laughs> like I've never been on a plane and not had to go and sort myself out because the rumble of the plane, the turbulence turns me on. Right, and you so you'd have a wank in the, in the toilet. No, it right. just gets trains. It's safe. Yeah, that, is that true? You've always had. I mean, we said this last week. You've There's not got, many planes I've been on and not had to come in. We did say that. I, <laughs> I, I'll be honest, though. I, I'll be honest. When I was when I was younger, I so for like a, I hit puberty very late, so I had like uh, several years of where I would come and not the no jizz would come out, and yeah. I was wanking what, ghost everywhere, is? like everywhere. Hang on. Yeah. You, were, you were already wanking, but to know, to no, know there was no the, result. There was no result. It was perfect. It was, the, it was the perfect crime because there's no evidence. So you're just, <laughs> you're coming and you're, uh, and then you look down and it's just like, whoosh. why? You know what I mean? What do you mean, why? Why is there no cum? Because balls my balls hadn't producing. dropped. Oh. Yeah. So I only hit puberty when I was like 16. So uh -huh. like very, very late. So I had these years where I'd be like, just, I'd be in the back of like cattle traders, like I, in class. I came a few times in class. In a, in a cattle trailer in class? Well, no, the cattle trailer, yeah. no, the cattle trailer wasn't in class. But like, <laughs> I'd be in class and because I hadn't developed, I, I don't know if you remember when your dick was a size that I would wank like that. Yeah. So like that. So I'd have a hole. It's this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a hole in the, in the pocket of my pants. <laughs> so I could just put it in and just like that. 
But like I could do it and then just uh, and like in French <laughs> class I would do it in uh, French. That's a word in French as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I would come like oh, you know. <laughs> Uh, well done, mate. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was it was, it was wild. Cause it's great. Yeah, but you what, remember after, like after power? you've been wanking with, with nothing happening for years. What happened the first time? Was it in like fuck French, and then all of a sudden you've got a soggy pocket, pocket full of cum? No, no, I didn't. The first time I wasn't in French. It was just at home. But I was afraid for years that I was going to be a boy forever. Like that I was going to be just a child. <laughs> like do you remember Gary Coleman, that lad. <laughs> That, one, that child actor. <laughs> From different strokes. Yeah, he was like, oh, what was it? Uh, what, what you about talking about, Willis? That yeah. guy. I yeah. thought I was going to be him. I was just a, 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 a an eternal child like Peter Pan. So, <laughs> so which was like very, like gave me a lot of anxiety. But so I would try to actually push my ball down. Like to, to make my ball drop. I would like, get the fuck down. Oh, you thought it was a physical, if it, if you push it. If I push it down, the ball gets down. And also, like, so I know, I know uh, pubes ratting. And so then I'd, I'd have to, but like, when I, where I went to school, everyone was on a hunt for people with no pubes. Like, that was like, it was like an Easter egg hunt, but like to find someone who was Yeah, pubeless. we used to have prove a pube. Prove a pube. Yeah. 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 Huh? So. You never had prove a pube in school? Prove a pube. Pub. So like, people would be like, you've got no pubes, you lad. And you're like, I fucking have. And they go, go and prove a pube. And you just have to get your pubes out. Or pull one out. Yeah, pull one out. Like, so yeah. people would have a little baggie in there, the pubes, like they found. Just oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Some kids would like get their air course and collect their own yeah. hair from the barbers and just have it get ready to be lad. like, "Here you go, Waller." Yeah, oh. I I knew a lad who did that who got the his like hair from his head and like sellotaped it to his armpits. Yeah. So like then when he was in the you know changing locker rooms, but lads would go around and jock you. That was a thing in our thing where they're just yeah yeah. Um. So I would be on fucking high alert. Like I was like a fucking. Ninja, I would stay close to walls Wearing, like, and stuff. Pants, four sizes too small. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'd be welded. Are you walking like, around like this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the wall. Yeah, just oh. along the along the fucking walls, uh, like a bank robber. But Who's yeah, that kid over there. That's just Mike. He's just getting them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spider Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> spider Mike, Spider Mike does whatever <laughs> Spider Mike does. Uh, Can't yeah, though. but it was fucking. It was stressful, man. I can imagine. No wonder you're trying to get, you know, antidepressant medication. This is, I think this has had some long... He doesn't want antidepressants, though. He wants sleeping tablets. Oh, I'm thinking so you, I'm you've thinking got I've antidepressants? Got... Sorry. I think you've I'm got... going to my doctor soon because I'm not sleeping very well. Oh, lad, I'm going through a nightmare at the minute with sleep. Really? Same? What? Yeah. Me so broken I'm... ribs aren't helping me, like... How would you break your ribs, lad? Uh, I turned into a, a banister coming out of Anfield. He turned into a banister? Like, as in, like, just walk? <laughs> I'm a banister. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a fairy tale at midnight. He turns into a banister. Oh. The strong. The is that Adam Rowe? No, it's a banister. <laughs> it's 2023. He can identify as anything he wants. He's like a wear banister. Like when a clock strikes 12, he just becomes a banister. Uh, I, I smashed my ribs into a banister fleeing a Liverpool game. Oh, fuck. Uh, and uh, yeah, very sore. So at the minute, there's no comfortable position to sleep in. Mm. So like I'm, I'm up until my brain is literally like, I need to turn off. Like it, where it just can't do anymore and it will then sleep in pain. So I was up to like quarter to five this morning. Oh my God. Yeah. You've not been sleeping, Mike? No, no. And I get, I got to a fucking uh, gig there the other day. And I've met, it, it's been going on for about a month. I think what happened was I started uh, liking this girl, was, was kind of kicked it off. But I'd, I'd been having a thing where I wasn't sleeping before events I'd be nervous about. Like I had a special uh, that I shot and the whole night before, it didn't sleep one wink, right? Yeah. But if it's been happening, uh, happening a bit, right? But I got to a gig then last week, and I was doing it, and I was on stage, and I was like kind of forgetting fucking words and shit, you know? Yeah. Um, and I came off, and then this lady says to me, her name's uh, Mags McHugh. She's a, an old comic, right? An old English comic, but she used to live in Dublin, so I know her. So she's like, she was like, you're not well, Mike. You're not well. I can see it. You're not well. And I was like, yeah, I know. I've, I've not been sleeping. She was like, we're calling the NHS right now. Right now, I used to work in healthcare. And Is what this you the girl you fancy? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I would give Mags a shot. Um, how old is how Mags? Mags is 67 years of age oh. and currently has cancer. Um, but, oh my God. But there's could a, be but kindred there's, spirits. Yeah, there's a sauciness to her and, uh, and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind uh, sniffing her. But so. <laughs> she... No, do you know what one of those old women who just kind of like it smells like nice? looks like she fucks. Yeah, or... Hundred <laughs> percent. But just, um, just one of those old women that looks like she fucks and has cancer at the moment. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd fuck probably fuck more if I had cancer, though, because I'd be trying to get as many fucks in as possible yeah, before I drop dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Famously, chemotherapy makes you hornier. <laughs> yeah. And that's a fact, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, don't know. Oh yeah, it's, it's an aphrodisiac, oysters and <laughs> chemotherapy. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're all sat there. Yeah. Yeah, at the yeah. same They're the two time things. Yeah, the machine. Absolutely. You're all sat there in a room, tubed up, looking yeah. at each other, Come going, here, you. <laughs> you don't want I'd rip the wig off you. Oh, oh. Get it. Yeah. You, you bloody love and, me. And you're in. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. You're in no shagging, gown. please. Yeah. Oh, uh, so oh. uh, anyway, she says to me, right, we're calling up the NHS. I used to work in healthcare. What you do is you call them up. Because I couldn't get an appointment. Where's she from? For a doctor, huh? <laughs> it's this woman. She's been spent, England. She's spent some time somewhere. in Rwanda, some in Dublin. <laughs> and yeah. by the sounds of it, Peru. Stroke. Stroke. <laughs> and the no, cancer. I want an appointment. The cancer has caused a stroke. I will be calling it. The cancer's <laughs> making her that horny. She's got foreign accent syndrome. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh my. I, that, she's got accent cancer. Oh, that, yeah. I, I got that, uh, the video pop up the other day of that woman who's got yeah. a Chinese accent from yeah. the head injury. It's, I think it's the funniest thing that's ever happened. It's amazing. In People the history. keep tagging me in it. Not of, to wear. Yeah. Wow. Not to wear. I, I think even if if that was me and I was talking in the chat, I'd, I'd find humor in her. No, you wouldn't. No, I absolutely would. Are you joking? Are you joking? You'd find humor and you like, you can't like talk to your friends no more. because I can't, can't talk to them. I would laugh every second. Of exactly. It. Are you laughing with me? Yeah. yeah. 100%. If I'm talking in a Chinese accent, I can't help it. Here's what I want to know. Right. The woman who speaks in a Chinese accent, why doesn't she just put her own old accent on? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Know, just like, do an impression. She can't even speak English, though. She goes, uh, this. she listens to a, a voice message she got from, like, the bank or an insurance company. They sent her a CD with her voice as a recorded on because they had it as part of GDPR. And she listens back to her own voice and she's like, I like to speak like this. This woman speaks so good, and I know speak as good. You're like, she's not only got the accent, she's the bro- forgotten the li- the broken English. She's yeah. got forgotten how to. Yeah, but why doesn't she just be like, I don't speak, I don't speak too fat and good, bruv. You know what I mean? I want to speak like a woman on the fighting type. It's probably the cancer and all the horniness, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. What happens yeah, if yeah. you get accent, uh, horn accent syndrome, but you can't do any other accents? What? But what? that is what it is, isn't yeah. it? But she, no, like you don't know what a Chinese accent is. She she's not trying <laughs> I think to. You Chinese. end up sounding Cal, like Cal, <laughs> whoa, 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 park the bus a minute. She hasn't woke up and they've gone. You can't have your voice anymore. <laughs> and she's gone. Do you know what? Luckily, I do a belt of a Chinese <laughs> exactly, accent. Exactly. But if That's she did, not what's going on? If she didn't do a belt of a Chinese oh, accent, oh, you mean if she was bad at it? Yeah. Then she just sounds fucking stupid. But as it stands, she just sounds Chinese. She, she just out of a speech. Speech. If you like, say you you live in like a forest or something, you've never been like. Uh, you never heard any of that. Carl, 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 Carl. <laughs> She's not trying to do. I know. Chinese... But what would happen if she wasn't like you know? Surrounded... She'd still be doing. The... She's not actually doing a Chinese accent. That's just what she her is. mouth does now. <laughs> she is. <laughs> what if she never heard the Chinese accent? Exactly. What I'm then saying. she probably couldn't do. She, you'd, you'd have to know it. Somewhere in your exactly. head. No, you have, yeah. You're both no. insane. No, no, no. If she'd never heard a Chinese accent, she wouldn't wake up and go, oh my God, hello. Yes, she would. <laughs> no, she wouldn't. She's not trying to do a Chinese <laughs> accent. Yes, she is. No, she yes, is. Yes, she is. So, yes, she is. So, yes, she is. So, yes, yeah, she is. It's her, foreign accent syndrome, not yeah. like stupid mouth syndrome. It's yeah. called foreign accent syndrome because they haven't got a, be- they haven't given a better term. No, it's, she's, a, that's it's what not she's just doing. accidentally Chinese. Yes, it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. She's Someone heard the Chinese <laughs> accent and something is malfunctioning in her head and it's making her do a Chinese accent. No, it isn't. That I, is not what's happening I, at all. Cast them both. No, I think I think that she's doing uh, she's doing a Chinese accent and she's racist. <laughs> and this is just some fucking horse shit that she's like, I have to do the Chinese accent. I don't know how to do a Chinese accent. But I think she's just like, I have to do it. There's nothing else I can do. <laughs> I have my head. <laughs> And that's a fun life to live then. I you think Chinese forever. You would have to be predisposed to something to be able to do it back. And, uh, you, I rec- right in, there's definitely a doctor. Yeah. Dr. Canary. Right because what, what you're saying is, it, she's just doing a noise that that's is a accidentally Chinese accent, yeah. sounds Chinese. Yeah, that's exactly no, what I'm No, I'm saying, in her head, there has been a malfunction with, with that injury, and in her head, she's doing Chinese. I can't tell you how profoundly no. stupid you both are right well, now. Well, I can't tell you, you. So you're saying she'd never heard the Chinese accent and she she'd would be st- doing this accent? Exactly the no, same. No, absolutely yes, not. Yes, she would. No, Disagree. no, not well, You think there's a Chinese part of the brain? No. That's what <laughs> you do. No, no, You no, think no. there's a Chinese part, no, no. the cerebral... I, I think she is trying to speak in her own voice 
and something has happened with her brain and her vocal cords that makes it make that sound, and it just so happens no. to sound to us like a stereotypical racist Chinese accent. <laughs> no. That's what it is. No. She, her brain hasn't gone, right, we're fucked here, so... I choose Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> that is not right what's in, going email on. Email in. I someone who knows. I, and there's I, only 150 cases of known cases of this in the world. All Chinese people might have it. <laughs> you think that's no. actually... That's, no, Carl. So, absolutely, 100%. They're just making a noise. No, but so you think that they've all been in an accident. <laughs> yeah. Like China's been in an accident. Yeah. And <laughs> that's the accent they've come up with. Right, because it doesn't sound like something... You would come up with that. It does sound like it they're... It sounds a bit, you know... Mike, finish Chinese. your story, because we <laughs> absolutely tra tranced all over it. Your one... Actually, your one anyway, says this week, she worked in, in healthcare. Um, and this came about because the accent I was doing uh, was obviously a bit mental. But she was like, okay, she's like, so you call up the NHS. I know what you say. They answer the phone and just tell them, just tell them, I'm probably not going to stab anyone. I'm probably not going to stab anyone. Then they're going to think... Oh, he is going to stab someone. Is that right? how you get yeah. an appointment? That's how you get. She's like, that's how you get an appointment. Trust me. She's like, just say, I'm probably not going to stab anyone. And she just sat beside me in the green room. Peter Flanagan, another comic, was across the way. Jack, and I still work in restaurants. I'm probably not going to starve to death, but I would like a table for two at seven o'clock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a perfect... psychology on everyone because you're not threatening nobody, but they're still like they've planted the seed. Of course, they're like he's a he, he, stabby Mike here. So <laughs> I. Uh, so I says that, I tells them, I'm, you know, uh, I get on it and, and they're like, oh, he hello, what's the problem, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, look, listen, I'm not thinking of stabbing anyone. They're like, <laughs> they're like, they're like, really? I was like, probably not. Um, <laughs> but I do like, want to sleep. Right. But I do, like, and I tell them I'm not sleeping. Uh, it's been a fucking, it's a, it's a nightmare. It's tough. I'm seeing it. voices, there's shadows, there's everything. And I'm like, Mags is beside me kind of telling me what to say. She's like, there's a horse. You see horses. Like, she's just, she's like, just be as nuts as be you can. So I was like, Are you sure Max is real and you haven't made it up? <laughs> I, I'd be dead honest with Tell you, lads. Tell them there's a horse. <laughs> you and know, it Maggie, sounds like bollocks. You know, it does sound like bollocks. Is Maggie sat next to you right now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me you say horses. <laughs> <laughs> she's telling me not to stab anyone. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to bum anyone to say that. <laughs> I'm probably not going to bum anyone. Yeah. So, anyway, so then they ask all these questions when they say they're not. Uh, sleeping and they're like uh, have you exhibited any they're like have you exhibited any strange behavior and then you have to kind of be like no you know like you have to be like you know you're trying Stupid to be like way. act strange so they're like all right we're gonna get you uh, a guy to ring you back right i was like great no doctor a guy a guy a man just ray winston just anyone just someone's gonna call we're you we're gonna back. need that accent now so i finally get to sleep that night at fucking quarter to six at quarter past six the NHS fucking calls me, wakes me up. In the hour. evening? In the fucking morning. Right, okay. They call me at 6.15 in the morning. Yeah, but they've made you look a cunt there. Yeah. Your girl just woke up and like, God, sorted tonight. <laughs> 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 Next case. Well, they, they call me up and when I saw it, because I just got to sleep, I nearly went through the fucking roof. I looked at the phone, I was like, who the fuck is calling me? I answered, did I, the NHS? I was like, why are you calling me? And they're just like, oh, we wake you up? And I was like, yeah, why would you call someone who's been complaining about sleep at six fifteen? Because if anything, they're the people who are going to be awake. Yeah, I Get know. But like, away. how about try him fucking fifteen minutes after he said he he might stab someone? <laughs> how about try that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So she goes, and then I was like, "Do you In have their defence? You said you probably weren't going to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they yeah, they played the odds. You played you played yourself there. I've got. I'm getting no support here. Yeah, there's no empathy for me here. But <laughs> so anyway, I was like, "Well, do you have an appointment then?" And she was like, no. I was like, why are you calling? <laughs> She's like, just to check up. On what? <laughs> the stabbings. <laughs> just to see if you're still having problems sleeping. I am, because you woke me up. <laughs> Jeez, that's amazing. Yeah. Horrific. Yeah, I need some help with my sleep. But if they offer me antidepressants, he's getting told to fucking swivel, mate. Yeah. yeah. You're not doing that. No, I don't want that at don't all. I want sleeping like tablets. Down, I do want some Get night nurse. Time. I've had night all. It says to take one and then maybe another one an hour later. So I took two at once and they didn't work. So then I took four the next night and they didn't work. And then I had eight and they didn't work. And then Heath Ledger. God. Night all. Yeah, it's what, what killed Heath Ledger. <laughs> no, night all. Night 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 there is a point where like on day 12, you do have to stop that sort of sequence, don't you? It's like the gambling thing, isn't it? Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. Keep doubling until you win. Win. <laughs> doubling until you go asleep. asleep forever. <laughs>
Oh, it's fucking grim. Not being able to sleep is so fucking... Up. I'm getting like three or four hours a night. As soon as you start thinking about it, yeah. you're, le you're less hard to go back to sleep. It's a, it's a crazy cycle. And the worst thing is like there's... And this is how this is how much like people like, you know, gender shit. I was saying this to a girl recently. I was like, I was like, oh yeah, I'm fucking barely sleeping like two hours, three hours. And she goes, well, she's like, that's more than a new mother though, isn't it? That's more than a new mother, isn't it? Right. And I was like, okay then, Claire, you're right. Actually, I'm not tired. <laughs> Actually, you're right. I'm brimming with fucking energy in light of that comment. I'm going to run a marathon right now. I'd never looked at it like that. Oh, you've lost a leg. That cunt's lost two. You should be happy. Like, shut up. I woke up to a message uh, this morning. So on my Instagram story yesterday, I put like a, a thing saying I'm so sleep deprived. Yeah. I woke up to a message today from uh, a friend of mine who's pregnant. She was like, you know what sleep deprived is? I'm oh. pregnant at the minute and he keeps kicking me in the night. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm still tired. Yeah. Like you can, your life might be worse, but that doesn't mean mine's not worth complaining about. It's, Doug Stanhope has a great thing about it, is, which is like, it's like your suck doesn't make my suck suck any less. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but people somehow think it does. Yeah. You need to learn how to sleep. And that sounds insane to say. But like, I've told them before, I've taught myself how to sleep. Yeah, well, you have. Yeah. Take us through your steps, Carl. How'd you do that, lad? We, with the, the kind of a lucid dream, you start in the same place every night, and then you just build a new story each time. So you, you let your brain go somewhere else. So you're not focused on the, I'm not sleeping. You're focused on that and your brain switches off quicker. So you go into a little fantasy land. So I start in the same place every day. Yeah. And then I'll be like, oh, I get in the car and I'm driving here. And when this happens, and then you'll just naturally fall asleep. Yeah. Okay. I do a version of that, but it involves cocaine and, uh, and women. I'll keep you awake, if anything. Yeah. In my head. I just go, it. yeah, oh, no, I know what you mean. Head, though, yeah. You do it like a daydreamy thing, yeah. but it just ends up. And Weirdly sorted really you quick. You sleep before you notice. Where like, do you oh, go in your head? Well, I start under the bridge. What? I'm just under the bridge. What bridge? Are you a troll or are you a <laughs> I'm, I'm just under there. There's no, right. there's no like scenery. I just know I'm under the bridge and then I'll just create it. I'll be like, oh, I'll come up to the road and I get in my car and then I'll drive. And then usually two minutes in, I'm asleep. Yeah, because it's boring. Yeah, because yeah. you're just making it. It's all it's new each night. You Could do, you just come to mine and just tell me the story you're cre creating, see if it knocks me asleep? <laughs> yeah. You, you could join them under the bridge. It's is that the same as counting sheep? It's taking your brain somewhere else. Just, right. just making it. That's how people lose a dream. You can learn to lose a dream through the same method. I was counting sheep one time because I thought that would work and I lost count and it done me head in and I just got really wound up and went and played FIFA. Yeah. And you can only have, when you wake up in the night, you can only really have one wank Finn and then was, it doesn't. Finn was counting sheep once and he got an erection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Jesus Christ. Oh, hang on. God. Yeah. <laughs> because there's a stereotype that Welsh people fuck sheep and Turkish people. Awful. <laughs> is it? More Turkish people, to be honest. Is it? Not anymore. It used to be. Before they got married, they used to go and bum goats. Messy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what? mad. Who? Like the men. Turkish men. Do you reckon your granddad's bummed a goat? Uh, this has got real patron exclusive energy, <laughs> hasn't it? <laughs> nice one, Mike. Thanks for coming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's a question we've not asked for two and a half years. Uh, I don't think. I'd like to think not, but you never know. Like, it was because they couldn't have sex before marriage. So they were shagging was... livestock. Yeah. Just shag all the women who you're not marrying? No, that they'd, was against shag, God. they'd shag livestock or they'd shag <laughs> each other, but keep it on the down low. Well, I grew up on a farm. And keep shagging a woman on the down low. Mate, and, <laughs> yeah. and goats are dirty. <laughs> yeah. That's a, a well-known fact. I say there is something. I, I, I did grow up on a farm and there is something when you're there that like there is temptations. <laughs> like genuinely because... That's I'm not I'm not joking about this. Like no. we kind we we had to be kind of that was our birds and the bees talk. Like we didn't get told the about goats and the cows. Well, it was just like I'll tell you. I'll explain why. It's because like you have these thing called sucky calves, right? So these are like calves. So when they're born, we yeah. take them from the mother and then we feed them. So we're kind of like the milk their mother, the olive. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we feed them. Oh, don't worry about your mum. I've got yeah. something right here. Yeah, something some like that. Like milk. But Mike, have you got a, t a hickey on your tit? Oh god! Yeah, so we feed them, uh, we feed them uh, out of a bucket. But to teach them how to drink out of a bucket, you got to put your fingers in their mouth, and then they go, um, um, and then you bring it down uh, into the bucket of milk, and they start learning how to drink that and way. Then you put their foot in your mouth, and you're like, oh fuck! That's, <laughs> That's why they call it foot mouth disease. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like it is. the truth it's of it is, farm aids when you fuck animals, uh, like. When you put your finger in their mouth, like it is one of the most glorious sensations, like known to man. Like it is so warm and wet. And even as a child, like even though you haven't put it together yet because you've not put your hand in a vagina, something 
is coming over you. Like, this is the perfect place to put my cock. Now, but that's just... So that's, you didn't even jizz till you were 16. I, I know that. So they, they got... Their throats were not affected oh, oh. by... No, no, no. Hold on now. Take it easy. But so... But the thing is then, like, you'd be doing that and it's so much fun that, like, we kind of have to be just warned, like, by our parents, like, just... Just leave it at the hand. Nothing else goes in there. So and you we, just fingered them. And we were like, I should Well, they're like they're assholes. Yeah. Sometimes we did do that. But it was actually genuinely, and I mean this, it was for their own good. <laughs> um just the older cows. Yeah. They did Why? And, well a prostate exam. Uh, well, yeah, because sometimes they'd have a thing called scour like, which is like <laughs> like diarrhea of of the calf arse. And why didn't you, you just wait to see if it Add diarrhea. Wait, you see what it shit looked like. Because we didn't have time. Uh, there was <laughs> there was no time for that. A lot of work to be done. So you you stick uh, your finger up uh, their ass and you go like that. <laughs> now it does. That. Like when I do it like that, it it is reminiscent of of a different movement. The middle two is better. Right. Yeah. Hang yeah. on. Hang on. You stick two fingers in the bum of a cow to check if they've got diarrhea. Well, it's a calf, Dan. Now a take calf. it easy. Oh, not a full grown. Oh, a baby cow. Oh, that yes, makes it better. This is a calf. Oh, yeah, it's better. Or well, baby cow, you a finger wouldn't do anything. It'd be like throwing a fucking a, a you know. big cow, a, 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 like an adult cow <sighs> finger. That I would like... it'd be yeah, it'd be fucking nothing. It'd be like throwing a fucking pen in a bucket. You know what I mean? <laughs> they wouldn't feel a they wouldn't feel a thing. In fact, they'd laugh at you. They'd be like, what the fuck is that? Although I will tell you this. <laughs> <Cow> laugh, <laughs> I will tell you this. And this is... You're uh, fish th- me or get away. This is true. I do believe I made a cow uh, come once. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny here. I'll tell you what, what happened. And it, it was genuinely... <laughs> it was genuinely not uh, on purpose. Uh, what what happened was so, but you will wear that lingerie around. The I farm. will. There was times I wanted to feel wanted, and uh, and I felt I wasn't really getting enough attention. Um, so I was out in the the cow yard, and we were putting them because we milk cows every day. So you have to get the fucking cows into these fucking cubicles to milk them. And there was one day this cow was like fucking. She just wouldn't go, and it's like that's the problem. It's the thing in life as well. When like managers have to be dickheads to people below them to just get them to do what needs to be done. The thing is, if a cow won't get in, I gotta make the cow get in by force. Like history won't be kind to what I've done to some of these cows. Like just fuck like fast bender and twelve years like you fucking. So anyway, <laughs> I I just start hitting the cow, and she just won't move. And then after a while, I was like, could feel like that. She she kind of liked it. <laughs> Like, and she was kind of like, and I could feel these like rumblings of, do you know, just kind of like that. And then. Can we just have a replay on that, please? Mm-hmm. You've got a like, cow face as well. Huh? You've got the lips. <laughs> like there was this deep. Your cow is way better than your London accent. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, well, I've spent a lot more time with them. Um, and I have a lot more love for them, to be honest. I hate people from London. But so this cow was just, right. And, I was, and then something came over me. As you're, it's like if a girl was like, I'm nearly there, I'm nearly there, so I'm just fucking. Oh. And then just, you know, just, and then I could feel that, you know, that tremble, yeah. like of the, the, and I was like, fuck, right? And then like I stopped, and then she was all like, oh, and I was like, fuck. With her hands? Huh? <laughs> yeah. What the hell, mate? Stood on t- its hind leg. Like, oh, Mr. Michael. Yeah. And then, and I was like, oh, fuck, what have I done? You know what I mean? And then, from then on, she would try, because after that, and then she- looked over and she was smoking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good, good gear, that. <laughs> yeah. Hope you're ready for round two, <laughs> Shay. That was thorough, Mike. That was thorough. Did she ever move it. anywhere again without, you know, no, you bringing it to orgasm? But see, this was the thing. This gave her then. <laughs> this is, but like genuinely, Dan, and I'm not, this all sounds like- Your I'm, dad's like, Mike, I'm having a fucking nightmare <laughs> yeah. with this one. Yeah. And she keeps winking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be dead honest with you, and this was, and I'm not joking about this, that was the problem. After that, she, want, she wanted that every time, and I was like, I had to literally just be shouting at her, like, I cannot make you come I've got every. A headache. Like, every, yeah, I'm not well. I'm, I'm tired as fuck. Sheila. I've had a long day. Sheila, I'm we'll tired. We'll do it in the morning. That's Sheila. right. Um, but. 
set uh, high standards too early, haven't you? Well, though, that was it. And then she's like, well, I'm not going to be milked unless I come. And then I was like, that can't. We can't live this way. <laughs> you said high Sheila. standards too early. He's whipped a cow to completion. No, it's like yeah. the first Christmas. She's about yeah. like a grand. And they're like, well, next Christmas, two grand. She's yeah. like, figure up my ass next time. But I, I, tell, you, I tell you this, and, and I'll tell you no more. People think, because I grew up on a... Uh, a dairy farm that's like some innocent like fucking life but it's like there's there's obviously the sexual elements with these animals I think you've dispelled that myth already yeah Yeah, I know because it is quite you get quite carnal at a very young age and you get quite primitive um, and lustful I don't want to put anyone off but also it was like you know people are like well we grew up in a city it was hard I got I got stabbed on the farm yeah that's right. By a cow. By no. the cow's fella. Well, <laughs> by the bull. <laughs> by, the bull. <laughs> by the bull. And by the way, if I wanted to ever die an honourable death, to me would be a bull, like a big male cow, like just fucking absolutely <clears throat> railing me gorging up against you. the wall. Yeah, just fucking gorging me. Yeah. That's that, how I'd like to go. What's the least manly death on the farm? <sighs> um, if you Peck slip- to death by chickens. <clears throat> Like in what way would the chickens? I don't know. Right, I just thought if a of chicken it. kind of pecked a hole in your heart, kind of thing. Yeah, that'd be bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I think that I think the most like cowardly way is if you slipped and fell in the slurry tank. Oh, yeah. My Which God. is just a big pile of shit that we have on the farm. Uh, you Finn, know what I mean? Finn's I've Googled just done some yeah. googling. Yeah. We have the of of oh. cow orgasms. It's not on the screen. Right. But basically, cows don't come during sex. Yeah. So Mike has given that cow its first and yes. probably only ever oh. orgasm. Right. Which is the like... The thing is, though, who done that research? Maybe they're just not really good in cow beds. This is BBC Mike, Science. Michael Rice <laughs> Jr. <laughs> you gave a dairy cow an orgasm before you, you gave yourself an orgasm. Yes, I did. That's impressive. Yeah. Not I a did. lot of people can say that or want to. <laughs> right. They, they, they haven't wanted to say it. And I mean, anyone cool. can say it. Um, <laughs> the the, the slurry tank yeah. is a special form of grim, isn't it? A slurry tank is a special form uh, of grim. It's a swim. So it, it's a, it's a, it's a, if you have never been on a farm... There's mm. just a bit. It's not like there's no signs going. Yeah, don't fall in this. This is like yeah, twelve feet of shit. Like poo girl, it's just somebody, just a or leads. Yeah, it's yeah. Just yeah. A, She just she fell in the long drop. Yeah. Oh yeah, famous poo girl. She fell in the in the into the toilet into the long drop on the drop. first day as well. She was like three days. There's no poo there. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh that my was her god. Tent. Yeah, she fell into the into the poo and she's she f- through the toilet into the poo. Yeah, into just a big hole of poo. Poo girl. Right. And every farm's got one of those. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's like a big Olympic swimming pool size of just fucking nothing but shit. And my father didn't like to put any fencing around it. So, like, just to kind of make life interesting. So, <laughs> uh, like, he did love, like, he's addicted to, like, misery and hardship and just woe. So, like, he there's no fence around it. So, it was like, we could fall in there. Like, dogs fell in there and died. Cows <laughs> fell in there and died. And it was kind of like just a... A video game part, like where it's like, don't go near this lodge. Dead, 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 dead. So, how stoic's that? Yeah. If you lose a child to the slurry tank. Honestly, I think if he, my father, if he lost a child to the slurry tank, he, their part from me would be like, you know, just this is the way it needed <laughs> to be. There's a child to it, though. Where's the baby? He's just he's crawling towards the slurry tank over there. You're going to yeah. stop him. That's no, natural no. selection. No. Well, no, I think he would see that as kind of Darwinism as, and there was four boys, right? And he only need one of us to take over. So I think he was hoping that like three- the, Like the Hunger Games. A little bit like the yeah. Hunger Games, yeah. Where, do you, where are you age-wise in the four? I'm, I'm second, but so like joint oldest with my brother Pa. You um, joint oldest? Well, that's how I looked at, because we're Irish twins. So we were kind of right, seen, okay. we were seen as like the top two fucking picks, you know? What's, um, what's, what's Irish t- twins? Born within the same year. Yeah, born within the same uh, year. Uh, 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 but like, so- like they were fucking rah back on women can get pregnant days after they've shit a baby out. Thank you for that, yeah. Dr. Rowe. But so, <laughs> but so there was uh, Pa, me, then my brother Nimnog, and then- Whoa, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. What's his yeah. name? Nimnog. <laughs> that sounds racist, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> he had that thing where his brain went Chinese young, and uh, <laughs> he, he, f- he fell in the slurry tank and came out Chinese. <laughs> oh. oh, we'll name him Nimnog. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So I want to do a joke the, and I got to do Okay, right. The, so yeah. Just sorry. Yes. You've got your dad. Uh, yes. What's your, what's your older brother's name? Pa. Pa? Yeah. Then me, right. then Golf. Nimnog, then John. <laughs> John. Yeah. John's the last one. He's right. right. So, and. You know what? Uh, I'd have guessed that. So, fucking. Uh, yeah, it's very biblical other than Nimnog, obviously. But, uh, <laughs> so. Uh, what no, hap- Nimnog's in the Bible. Huh? No. It's in the Moses, isn't it? 
I think I think there was Nimnog parted the slurry bit. The slurry bit. <laughs> um, so uh, so me and Pa were the joint also. We're kind of the pressures on us to be farmers, but we're both absolutely fucking useless. As my father would put it, we didn't have the hands to wipe our arse. You know, we we. <laughs> We weren't we weren't worth shooting. That's what he would say to us. And it's no we're, joke. We're would, shooting. Well, see, because he believed. Well, you see, you need to know about my father is what he believes is kind of similar to to Hitler in a way. It's like about <laughs> breeding, like about genetics. So he felt he'd done his job when he married my mother because she's from land, a farming background. And he's from a farming background. So the children are just going to come out. Super Fuck, farmers. Super farmers. Welding, fucking knowing how to do shit. And he doesn't have to teach us anything. Yeah. So he would literally, when we're like five or six years old, he'd be like, go get an Allen key and twist that in. And we'd be like, Ugh. he'd like, go get it. And then we'd come back and he'd be losing, you're not worth shooting, you know. He couldn't believe it. He could not believe <laughs> that we off, didn't know how to fix a tractor <laughs> at six years Just of age. through breeding, he thought you'd be able to be like... Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Just plainly Just surfing breeding. over slurry. That's absolutely right. You can walk the, the Christ to the, the slurry <laughs> pit. Um, so Lord and Savior, the slurry, slurry pit. So, uh, but so Nimnog then came along and Nimnog, <laughs> now Nimnog was just different, right? What's his real name? Huh? Is that his Catholic name? Yeah, that's Nimnog. Nimnog. For, for, for just, that's what we call him. Right. Just, oh, yeah. right. Just, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. Um, N-I-M-N-U-G. Nimnog. Yeah, I um, Googled something else earlier. But so, <laughs> didn't it? Or corrected. So Nimnog was uh, a, just a different kind of breed and he was fucking like, just to let you, just to give you some context, he was obsessed with keys, right? Just the keys of, of everything. He was kind of a, he had lost for power. So was Dan. Completely. Yeah. Completely. You, you have a thing for keys? Yeah. Stuff on keys. Yeah. He said oh, <laughs> cocaine. I like that myself. Hey, hey you um, figured it out? I did, yeah. I'm no can of piss. I think you're worth shooting. I am worth shooting. <laughs> is that, stop. I mean, yeah. Is that, is on his birth, birth certificate name? That's on his birth certificate. Nimnog. Yeah. You don't have to say his real name, but is it? Oh. No. Okay, we know why you call him that. Right, excellent. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Nimnog was obsessed with keys and he came into the world with this like kind of succession level power hungry, you know, he was, he was a tyrant. <laughs> And he had no interest in the other brothers. He thought we were kind of like imbeciles, like just useless uh, lugs, right? So he loved talk the mechanics and stuff and different things. And he'd have keys for everything. So when we went to town to go into the fucking, to like go to the park and stuff, he'd go to the hardware store, get keys cut. He had a key to every single room of the house. He had a key to the fucking shed. He had keys to things on the farm. And then I already he, don't trust this lad. Yeah. Well, Nim, Nimnog certainly was, there was an ambition. <laughs> think about Vittorio ah, level ambition. A, a bit, oh my God. I yeah. really, trying, trying to be a fucking caretaker. Right. Well, he would have seen like groundskeeper <laughs> Willie as like that was Valhalla. That was, goat. yeah, he was the goal. So he'd have keys to everything, but then he would use these keys as a form of discipline, right? to kind of keep control of the house and control of other people's behaviors. So he would have keys to our rooms and we didn't have keys to the room, right? So one morning I got up out of bed. This is no joke. I go to get out of my bedroom door. It's locked, right? I'm like, what the fuck? So I start shaking. I'm like, what's going on? Nimnog was on the other side of the door. He's like, you shouldn't have eaten all the crisps, Mike. They were supposed to be divided up equally. Fuck it, fuck it, right? I was like, what the fuck? So I can't get out of my room. Nimnog's got me fucking locked in. Now, eventually, I have to go to school. So my parents are like, Nimnog, you gotta let him <laughs> leave. Like a fairy tale. Yeah. If you're bad, Nimnog will lock him in your bedroom. <laughs> Nimnog will lock in my bedroom. <laughs> Nimnog, but the, Nimnog. The, the, the problem was that Nim, like my parents couldn't come down too hard on Nimnog or they knew they're gonna be locked in the room like tomorrow. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, this is not even this is not even a joke. Did he, they the, not have keys either. What? No, well, they didn't have keys to all the fucking rooms. Like, we didn't, there's no reason to have keys for all these rooms. There is! Right. Stop to one a child locking people up. I mean, yeah, they, they, they could have, there could have been more anti-Nimnog measures put in the house. To lock shit. Like, I will say that, right? But so, anyway, the thing also you need to know about Nimnog is he had this, like, he had this, like, insane, like... It wasn't real, was it? No, lad. Nimnog and Mags McHugh are currently <laughs> living together. Um, no, so he had this just thing in his head about human rights, right? About, like, UN, the United Nations thing of human rights, and if his rights were breached, there was, like, health pay. He was always ringing child line. How to, old like, is he at this point? Huh? How old is he? Oh, Nimnog could have been, like... This, st this started from, like, the age of, like, four, I'd say, with the keys and... Locksmith? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Filch. Yeah. Around the house. Max 
That's the bed, you! You know the bed beyond ours! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flat with his keys. Go on. <laughs> I mean, there was a kind of a North Korean element to what he was at. Um, you couldn't have known that then, but <laughs> you, there was like this... Um, this weird dictatorial like uh, tyranny being put on us, but so Tim young Nim, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Nim, Nim Young Un, uh, Nim No Gun. Uh, so uh, anyway. Uh, the thing is, so right, it, this all kind of came to a head at one stage in a, in an instant we now look back at as uh, the siege. Um, so, yeah, no. So, what ends up happening, no joke, is Nimnog has done something wrong, right? He's a child and he has misbehaved in some way. I think he, he might have thrown a, 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 a cup off the wall or something. He was always at that kind of shit. So, he did something a bit mad. Um, true couple of thought, and my mother took his phone, right? She took his phone as a punishment. At this stage now, he's maybe 11 uh, or 12 or something. And he saw this now as a massive infringement of his human rights. Like he was <laughs> whipping out the Geneva Convention and he's like, that's what I like. So he was fucking like absolutely livid about this, right? And he was like, this will not stand, right? So the next morning, my father gets up half six in the morning to go, to go out the farmyard to work, right? And he goes to go out the, the back door. The back door is locked, right? He comes back into the kitchen. Nimnog's sitting there, waiting for him. He's first up in, in the back. You know? Yeah. It's in the dark. So I've been expecting you. And uh, so he comes back in. And my father still doesn't really know, like, what is, what's going on? Like, he's bit the, the door is locked. And Nimnog was like, I want my phone back, right? And he's like, what? He's like, the doors will be opened once I get my phone back. <laughs> so what it turned out Nimnog has done is he's locked the doors of all uh, the, the exits to the house, right? He's taken the keys of the Jeeps and the car. And in the sickest movie, he's locked the toilets to really turn the fucking screw. <laughs> so to, to put pressure on, I don't know no. where he's got the tactics uh, for this, right? So... Next thing I remember, my mother comes down. She's a nurse. She has to go to work. Yeah, and my sure. mother's... Huh? He's, he's 11 now. Yeah. Right, okay. Right. So my mother comes down and, uh, and she's, she's like, what, like, what's going on, got going on here? And Nimnog's like, you bear total line fucking... So next thing anyway, it, like she has to go to work. My father has to go out and milk the cows. There's this fucking stress. And Nimnog is just sitting in the chair in the kitchen, <laughs> just absorbing them, just being like, <laughs> give us the keys. You will never be allowed outside this house for a year. And he's like, you give me your fucking phone back. I will fucking... Like he was like fucking, you know, it was like that. IRA, like Bobby Sands level of fucking, I will not be moved, right? <laughs> just throwing shit on the walls. He's fucking, you know. Um, so he's just going nuts. It's this mad thing. And we're just all like, just eating our cocoa pops. And be like, this is, this is good fun. Uh, so, but next thing, like my parents just have to give in because they have to go to work and stuff. So they just have to give Nimnog back the phone. And, and Nimnog is like putting out his hands. He's like, a deal is a deal, right? We're making a deal here. So the parents give it uh, back to him. He gets the phone, and then in Nimnog's mind, he's done a deal under the like Geneva Convention, under all these laws. <laughs> this deal cannot be, you know, gone back upon or undermined. So he gets the thing, he says, thank you for the thing, and now we can move on. <laughs> like, obviously, as soon as they got the keys, they were like, you fucking little bastard, right? Yeah. He was like, we did a deal. <laughs> so he couldn't believe it, right? Now, so this all leads up to... Uh, this all is up. And I have to stress as well. He's a great lad. He's a great lad. He's, he's fucking, he's running our farm. He's a, he's a, he's a great man. Uh, I'm is groomed. he? Is he a farmer? Yeah. He sounds like he should have ended up at like Kilkenny prison. Yeah. 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 But he, but he, no, he was, he, he's an absolutely, he's an absolutely great lad. At the farm in general, like Everton, it was chaos growing up. Like it, he's not to be, uh, he's not to be blamed. But so what, where this ends up going then is that years later, uh, me and him are sharing uh, a Jeep. He starts driving at 17. I'm 19, right? So we, we're sharing the same like Jeep to drive around. Now, this is the first time he's ever had to share a key, right? <laughs> That's never had to happen before. And that, as you might imagine, doesn't really sit that well with Nimnog, right? So one day I'm out in the milking parlor 
just milking the cows uh, with my father. Cows shitting in your mouth. You seen as they just ah. Uh, you learn to like it, and um, so we're out there. You learn to need it. But um, so we're out there, and I have to go play five a side. So I come into the house. I'm like, I need to go. Uh, I need to go. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Go to get the keys. Keys aren't there. I was like, who's the keys to the Jeep? Nimnog's like, I have the keys, Mike. I'm like, can I get the keys off you there now, Nimnog? Nimnog's like, not tonight, Mike. I was like. What? Give me the fucking keys. I have to, to fucking go to the thing. He's like, not tonight, Mike. No way. I was like, where are you going? He's like, none of your business. I don't even think he was going anywhere. It just the keys were not being given up. So I goes to grab money. He picks up a chair, right? And he just turns the legs of the chair at me. He's like, get the fuck back. Don't make another move, right? I was like, what the fuck? So then he throws the chair at me, right? And just baits it down the farmyard to talk to my father about the keys, to make his fucking case for the keys. But on the way, he stops off in the workshop and grabs a, a Stanley knife, right? Now, I didn't know this, so I run out after him. I throw my hand on his shoulder, and he just turns around and just, ah, right? <laughs> Cuts me there and there, right? Can I just double check? This is the same man that minutes ago you described as a good man. He's a great man. He's a great man. <laughs> this was a lapse. This was a blip. But he is, right? So anyway, next thing. <laughs> In front of your dad? No, because he's, he, he hasn't, we haven't got to my dad yet. We're, we're going across the farmyard. So then this happens, and which is in, in one of the more insane moves, he continues his journey on to my father, thinking his case for the keys is going to be unaffected <laughs> by, the by the stabbing <laughs> of his brother. So then, uh, so I go in after anyway, and when I go in, he's there with... My dad, and he's just like, the keys, I have bags, there's, there is the thing. And they look at me, I'm coming up after, blood coming out of me. And he turns and looks at me and looks at my father and just said, now this is a separate issue. <laughs> 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 so I come in after, and anyway, I grab him, I'm fucking, you know, uh, furious or whatever. But then later after, uh, we were in the kitchen, and uh, we're, we're in the kitchen, and I was like to my mother, I was like, we have to fucking do something about this, this is fucking, you know, someone's gonna be killed, blah, 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 you know what I mean? And she's like, I don't think she, she, she was trying to kind of say, you know, say that it wasn't so bad and stuff, cause he's really good at piano, and she, she loves that. Um, <laughs> like he's amazing at Is that it. a redeeming feature? Huh? Stab someone when he's good at piano? Yeah, he, brother might stab you, but listen to the fucking keys. Yeah, <laughs> but that is kind it's of it. price you pay, Mike. Yeah, it is for genius. <laughs> You're not going to get anyone that's as great at piano and doesn't stab people. <laughs> um, so, but, and he was at this point, so I was like, there has to be something done. And he was like marching outside the back and he just shouts in. He's like, I should have finished off when I had the fucking dance. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy's real. Yeah, Nimnog. He's a great man. He's get a him, great man. Get him on as well. <laughs> yeah. But now he's, now he's, now he's running the show. I want to see Nimnug and Dr. Cafford have a fight to the say, death. Is he, on the pe is he on the spectrum? Because huh? I feel like he's a Dr. Cafford kind of guy. He's not, he's not really, because he, he's, he's super capable and he's a great, like, I can't. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. But they often are. Yeah. Are they? Is, yeah. Cat, is, Cat, is Catford running a, a business of some sort? <laughs> he runs a doctor's surgery. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, Rain Man, you know, he's fucking in the casino. So, I mean, your brother, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he'll never be tested. Yeah. But the keys thing, especially. Yeah. yeah. He is severely. Autistic. He's not on the spectrum. He is the spectrum. He yeah. is the spectrum. Grade eight piano and stabbings <laughs> is a weird combo, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it is. But I can't stress enough. A great, great. He's a good dude. lad. Oh, he's the best lad. Like now, he just had, he had anger issues when he was younger. <laughs> but to be fair, we were all just baiting. Like we were all, yeah. you know, we were all just, it, it was, it was uh, <laughs> like the last days of Rome on that farm. You know, everything was just fucking gone out the window, but... Um, and you say you can't sleep, is, like, huh? with all of this shit. Yeah, because that's, uh, obviously, when I'm sleeping, I'm like, Nimlo, you know, there's a lot of, like, uh, like flashbacks to that. The sad thing is he'll never be able to get a doctor's appointment because he can't ring <laughs> up and do the line. <laughs> <laughs> you thinking about stabbing anyone? I've got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Too late for that. <laughs> I often am. Yeah, but I got out there because I was, like, when I was home on the, the farm, I was, like, you know... I was like, I just need to fucking, I just need to get out. And I got, that's where I, that's why stand up was like my way out. Of like, you know, I moved to uh, America. Um, you lived, or you didn't live there, Adam, but you want to live there, isn't it? I, I, I mean, I might end up doing a bit of time there eventually, but yeah. Yeah. Two to three it's years. 
it's a great. Do you find yourself feeling more more loved there? What do you mean? Do you feel like like I felt when I went there first? I was like, this. Where were is... you, Chicago, Mike? Huh? Were you in Chicago? I was in Chicago. Yeah, I just visited back there in September. Actually, I had my fucking. This is story actually. When I was just back, I had my first uh, threesome ever in September, um, and I was with my best friend. My best friend, uh, Jimmy O'Brien. And this is something now that would never happen. Who? Huh? Jimmy O'Brien. Jimmy O'Brien. Jimmy O'Brien. Jimmy O'Brien, yeah. So. Who was the third participant? Huh? Nimnug. His dog. The key, you see it, ass. Yeah. Me, Jimmy, and Nimnug. Just checking if you've got diarrhea, Nimnug. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, good lord. Jimmy's going to help. Oh. Just hitting him with a stick. <laughs> So, uh, so, uh, what happened was, uh, have you ever, anyone, did, did, I'd never done anything like a threesome now before myself. You? Have you? That is. Two, but you were with two women, I'd say, were you? No. no. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Women? Huh? Like you were with two women and Dan? Yeah, no. No? Yeah. Two men? Yeah, just yeah. two men. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked a guy. I fucked another man. <laughs> but we were thinking about women. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the third person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In your head. Uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, two, two, yeah, two of us and a lady. Yeah. So I, I don't know. It kind of got forced uh, upon us in a way because it was with my friend. We're always like competing over the fucking the same women. Like cause they're always hanging around the same. So we're always it's 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 this thing with us like, and it's like makes us hate each other. Uh, each other's at time so uh, we were there it was after this show uh, in Chicago and there's this lovely lady there and she is <laughs> big boobies and other stuff and big she back. was yeah she was <laughs> oh yeah yeah big fucking that's, big back. that's yeah, the yeah, thing you. now isn't it people are liking jacked ones like <laughs> fucking does. yeah he likes Tra giants <laughs> traps giants yeah, yeah. come on yeah he likes WNBA <laughs> players <laughs> oh look at you you big centre yeah, yeah, you could dunk. You want someone who can dunk, really. Um, <laughs> I shagged Lewis dunk, the Brighton centre now. <laughs> He's big as well. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> so you're one anyway. So anyway, I'm chatting to your, I'm chatting to your one. I'm like, oh, this is great. I go to Tyler, come back. He's chatting to her. And then she goes off. I said, we just fucking leave her to me now, will you? And he was like, whichever, fuck off, will you? You cunt. So anyway, next thing. <laughs> Tell your friends. Yeah. <laughs> next thing, next thing we're at the end of the night, it's the three of us, just the three of us, just two of us just hanging around her, you know? And she's like, oh, let's go to this 5 a.m. bar. I'm looking at him, I'm like, would you ever just fuck off, right? So anyway, we go to the 5 a.m. bar and uh, we're chatting away to her and the both of us are kind of looking at each other like, you know? So she goes off to the toilet and sure then I says to him, sure, look, well, we both just tried to shag her, you know? And he says, sure, look, we'll say it to her anyway. Um, so <laughs> she comes back, right? And she sits down and I said to her, look, we were talking there now. And uh, we were thinking, sure, look, maybe we'd both shag you. I don't know if that would <laughs> kind of float your boat or what. And uh, What a way to propose yeah. a reason. We were thinking, you know, yeah. don't know whether it's something that floats your boat. We're thinking we both shag. <laughs> I, I don't know where your mind's been going with this whole thing, but we thought it'd be nice if we both were inside you at some point tonight. Um, so anyway, she was just like, she was like, yeah, sure. I was like, fucking God bless America, you know. Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> just like Iraq was a good thing. And uh, fuck them. This um, wasn't happening back on the farm. <laughs> no, absolutely oh, not. Um, uh, you'd have to be baiting ones for an hour for him to. Anyway, so anyway. You're getting so, him nugged to let all three of you in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway though because like, I, I don't know what the way you had it but you're like we had to have a thing where I was just like listen now fucking Jimmy for fuck's sake now if we're going to be doing this let's not be putting anything up each other's arseholes here we, we don't we don't Wait, I didn't I didn't need that conversation well, with my friend I think no I had to say it cause, anyway but I was like listen we don't want to fall in love or anything so um, <laughs> so that's the last thing I want happening here. So, <laughs> <laughs> so nothing like that happened, right? The only thing that happened during the threesome is at one point I was riding your one and my dick slipped out and Jimmy put it back in. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> I'll be honest. I didn't even see him do it. <laughs> Adam, come back. 
like, <laughs> I didn't see him do it. I didn't see him do it because, right, I was, <laughs> I was riding your one, right? And she, oh. so I was riding your one and she was on top of me, lad. <laughs> Oh, he's gone to get a corona. Fucking he's nice. He's gone to get a big oh. knife. He's gone to get a... Whoa! <laughs> I thought he was going to come in oh. and go full fucking Nimnog. Finn, can you get me a beer, please? Thumb off yeah. doing that, can son. Get I'll get one beer. as well. Finn, I'd love one as well. Oh, God. Big mic over here. So... How was I not expecting that line? Yeah. Like, I knew the story. I knew what yeah. was going on. Yeah. So, I'll just tell you now. Because this thing, I didn't see him <coughs> do it. So, it was very, like, confusing, right? Because you're one... So she was on top, like, of me. And I was like, oh, you know, happy as Larry, you know what I mean? Like a pig and shit. And next thing, just the, my dick goes out. And then it gets put back in, right? Pass but, me, like, me, just pass that her hands didn't move. Of course they didn't move. Yeah, and, and my hands didn't move when the dick got put back in. So, like, for a split second, like, I was like... Magic like, dick? Oh, God, or, you know... You thought it was the hand of Jesus. Or Jesus, or Christ, or it's whatever. It was Jimmy. But because then it happened again, and I was like, that's not. He did it twice. Yeah, and the second time, I was like, like that, it came, it came into my head, like, that's not Jesus. Like, that's the hand of a sinner, you know? Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, the devil. that's my best friend, Jimmy O'Brien, son of Tom the Butcher, you know? So, <laughs> I, <laughs> so, anyway, but lads, I swear to God, the second time he did it, like he did it so quick, like it just came out and he just, that I was like, like that's, that's what he's focusing on back there. He's like you know? Well, wait, hang on, what was he doing? Was he just- <laughs> I'll tell you now because, so- Was, I was he honestly, just technical support? What? Well, he was like, just a Wimbledon like a ball boy. Referee, putting it right back where it was. Like, that's, I mean, that's should, exactly right. He was just- He's giving you the fucking sticks. Yeah, lad, this one, bam up an ass. Well, that's right. Well, he was just like, if you think of like, say like the focus of a Wimbledon ball, but he's just watching and then, you know, and then he's back and he's watching. Um, I'm wearing he a skirt. The threesome, was he he was, so this is what happened. And I didn't realize uh, at the time, right? Um, what happened? She had said to him, she had given him a task, a mission. She had said to him, she said, Jimmy, listen, what you do now, I'm on top. And I was just riding and she, she just turned to him and she just goes like, you put it in my bum, right? So anyway, he goes back there. That's a cruel task to give a man. You know, in that position, there's no, there, there's no loop round and it's a moving target. So he goes back and he kind of gives it a try for a while. And then it's just not. He just can't get a clear shot. He can't get a clear shot. He's, you know, he's shimmying, but we, we've also done a lot of drinking and, and drugging and whatnot. So he's just, you know, and he just yeah. says, do, do you know what? This is not my dance. And I'm just going <laughs> to fucking watch. And I'm just going to fucking be a good friend here. <coughs> like a good, that's the best friend you're ever going to have. Yeah. Someone will just sit after after I fucking came, I felt like a fucking jazz musician. I was like, give it up for Jimmy on the ones and twos back there. <laughs> <laughs> give it up for Jimmy. <laughs> oh my god. Especially give when he cleaned hand. it up. Huh? Jesus Christ. It's nothing to clean up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but so so oh. that happened and then uh and that night I was going to New York the next day, I ended up fucking losing my what the whole thing, I my wallet and I was like, it was a fucking haze. But then I because we, we had been fairly fucked. Like, when I met him again, we didn't speak once about it either. And then, like, when we met, like, 10 days later, we were back in uh, Dublin. And, uh, and I was like, did I imagine that happening? Or did he grab me flute, like, several times <laughs> and put it back in? So I says, I was like, lad, did this, do you know when we did the thing? Were you grabbing my kyak and putting it back inside your wand? And he was like, oh, fuck, yeah. He was like, I feel bad about that now. I was like, no, 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 it'll be great now. It'll be a great story, you know? But it was a mad thing to happen. I mean, we, ha we don't talk anymore. But um, <laughs> You haven't had a threesome, by the way. Ha have I not? No, no, no I think witnessed, you- witnessed, yeah. Huh? You've cuckolded someone who wasn't in a relationship. Y you've had a twosome with tech help. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. But I think though, uh, I think that fucking, uh, if you, no, because that, that was that part of the thing, but there was other times where we were both, oh, right, where we right, were both right, involved. Right, 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 right. That was just a particular that was just towards stage the end. Yeah. of the whole thing. You know what I mean? But lad, I, America, I don't know. Like I, before I went there first, like I was a fucking, I was an innocent, I was a good, good girl. And it, and it, <laughs> it turned me bad. It like turned me into a little heathen on coke and blah, yeah, you know, yeah. cause I was gone, I got corrupted 
by, I don't want to say she was like a wizardess, but she was a... <laughs> a witch. She was some sort of, yeah, she was a, this hippie, hippie lady. She was, she was 33 years old. I was uh, 25 at the time. And she, there was some sort of a spell. I'll tell you what happened, actually. <laughs> I did fucking, I did fucking DMT, right? Uh, the drug one time. And this was before I met her. And I had this vision of like an Indian lady with like just doing like a did and just like light just <laughs> and and light just absolutely blasting out of her vagina. Now this was my vision. Now if that was racist, that's not conscious. So <laughs> that's that's the DMT. That's the drugs fault, right? But there was just light just straight out of her vagina, right? And then I was like, what the fuck? So the next thing, a few weeks later, I meet this Indian lady and she's 33. And I had been like kind of fucking weird about uh, sex, I did puberty late, I was awkward with it, I was, you know what I mean? I hurt one of my balls trying to push it down. And so, uh, so she anyway just takes me under her wing and she's like just feeding me like spices and whispering in my ear. She was a fire dancer and she'd all these ideas. She'd feed me like kombucha and just like putting pesto, you know, like <laughs> in on the back of my neck. I was like, oh, you know, but, uh, and tried, so <laughs> yeah. But like I was kind of under this like weird, I was in this weird kind of fever you need dream. You a massage eating a bagel and just spill that. Yes. Like, no, that's meant to happen now. Rub that in. <laughs> that's Scarlet right. Scarlet mayo on your face. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but it was all, it was all quite odd and pagan and uh, primitive and, uh, you know, from another time. And then, uh, and then like one day, this is, this is where it got fucking like weird. So I was, I was riding her anyway. I was having sex and, and I hadn't had much sex at that point. By 24, I'd fucked, shagged fuck all, right? And I was there and I was shagging away, doing a good eyes in and out the whole shebang. And uh, <laughs> next thing I'm about to finish, right? So I, I just, I finish on her uh, uh, belly there, you know? And she says, she looks at me and she just said, lick it up. I was like, I will not, like both my parents, <laughs> both, both my parents are still alive. I can't be doing that, you know? <laughs> and um, so, uh, so <laughs> next thing anyway, she she goes, lick it up. I said, will you go away or as bowel as a pig? I can't, what the hell do you think this is? The circus, you know? So next thing she says to me, right? She says, no, she said, you don't understand. It's good for you. It recycles your natural antibodies. It restores your natural essence. It's yogic. It's very, very yogic. And I said, like... Like yoga, she's like, yeah, now quick, get up before it gets cold. And for <laughs> some reason, that triggered me. Because I was like, I better get it while it's good. Like, I don't want it to get cold. That'd be fucking disgusting, you know? <laughs> so I crawled towards it, like Andy Dufresne in the Shawshank. I just kind of, and, <laughs> and I ate it up. I ate it up, and I've never felt further from Christ. I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, I did. Uh, lads, I could fucking... I had my own children die in my mouth. This is like the Battle of the Somme for my, <laughs> for myself, you know. Millions. Yeah. Oh. And even, yeah. And even now I think back on it and I'm like, because I don't like, I don't, uh, I, when people ask me, do I, did I, have I ever done yoga? I'm like, well, not the stretches, but. <laughs> I've certainly eaten my own calm, if that's what you mean, you know. You needed Jimmy O'Brien for that last one. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that you mean. Been a big one. <laughs> hot yoga. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but so have you ever done, have you ever had a taste now? You have. Come on. Only accidentally. Accidentally. I had a yeah. wine come in my own mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I come on my light bulb last week. You did not. I did. You've got an absolute cannon. Wait, when, 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 I'm, when I'm lubed up, it, it is a shotgun. Yeah. Yeah. Can we have a break? Yeah, please. please. We're going to need to because we've done an hour and three. Oh. Yeah. You should have brought some stories, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Next time you do a podcast, I'm not telling you how to do it because your podcast is great. But you need more stories. Right. Just next time. Work yeah, on yeah. It. Next time I'll come in loaded. Now then, ladies and gents, time to tell you about my actual absolute favorite sponsor. It's manscaped.com. Now listen, just over a month now until Father's Day, Sunday the 18th of June. If you haven't already marked that on your calendar, what are you doing with your life? I guarantee you right now, you are yet to buy your dad his Father's Day gift. And I'm telling you right now, do you know what your dad needs more than anything else? He needs better looking balls, a yeah. better looking cock. Your dad, just like you, wants to be sucked off. And your mum is not going to do that if he's got hairy, you know, 
help your dad get sucked off by your mum by going to man is that what you're saying is that yeah. the gist by going to manscape.com and getting the amazing lawnmower 4.0 the performance the package 4.0 oh, the whole thing get the performance package because you get some undies ball you get deodorant the preserver the ball deodorant there's loads of stuff you get the get the weed whacker for your nose and your ears oh yeah let, let your dad be less airy and let him get his balls drained this Father's Day. <laughs> That's the best gift you can give him. You trim the pubes. If anything, it's more of a present for your ma. She's going to have to suck them off. So why don't you help her enjoy the experience more? And if you use the promo code WORD20, you get 20% yeah. off and free shipping worldwide. Now, just to be clear, when you buy the Manscaped pr package, the total performance package, you don't have to actually shave your dad's pubes, do you? No. Nope. He does that. He does that. All right, because I don't want to lose sales. And you don't have to suck them off. That's your mum's job right, or great. his mistress, you know? Uh, people do cheat. Help your dad cheat on your mum. <laughs> Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WORD20 at manscaped.com. Or just get it for yourself and get yourself sucked off. Yeah, sort your balls out, mate. Come on. Wasn't Look. expecting to have a beer today, but you, you forced it. Yeah, I feel good about that. Mm. I don't know what took took over. Like, took yeah. us over. What? Took us over? What do I mean? Just came over yeah. us. Came over us. Well, it's, it's, I just, it, the filth. I've just come in with filth, haven't I? No, it's the it. bit about your mate putting your cock back in a woman's vagina. Yeah. Mm. Was the vagina? It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <clears throat> well when you when you had the when you had the the, the devil's threesome, as they yeah. call it, in biblical terms, did you was there any kind of was there any horse play between you and your your companion? No. Did no. You the Eiffel Tower? Yeah, I don't. We never. Me, me and the lad who had the. We ne, we never had to have a little. Can you give us two seconds, love? We just need to set out. You know the king's rules on this. Right. It was. It was just understood. I just gave him a look that was like, "Don't bum me," and he he was like, "Understood." Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, and men know that look. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like this look. Yeah. And he kind of reluctantly like, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> "What are you doing yeah. back there, lad?" Uh, Mike, yeah. Before when I was chatting, you said your. I said, "Where are you staying?" While you're in Liverpool, your answer was with a Japanese family. I'm staying with a bloody Japanese family. I am. I'm sure I didn't know it at the time, but um, I came in last night because I came in late last night because after uh, we did that gig at Hot Water, I actually went to that kebab place that you'd come in with some kebab from um, Shiraz. Yeah. Yeah. Barbecue house. And uh, I came in, got some kebab there. And then I had this absolute fucking debacle with an Uber where there's another Shiraz. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah there's loads. So, well, <laughs> this fucking idiot didn't know that. So I get him to come to Shiraz. He's like, I'm here. He's 15 minutes away. So then he's like, add in the location of where you are. So I add in Hot Water Comedy Club. Then he drives to where he's meant to be dropping me off, to Japanese people's house. <laughs> they come out with their <laughs> swords and stuff. He run, comes off. Um, so, and then, so I was waiting for 45 <laughs> minutes for this fucking Uber. And then he gets to our comedy club and he's not even there. He's like, he's like, I can't see it. I'm like, there's, there's a sign outside. And I get in the fucking thing. He's laughing for some reason. Turns out he's fucking trying to be, studying to be a cloud architect. What the fuck is that? And anyway, he drops me back again. I didn't know they were Japanese uh, people, um, which I've no, I'm, am I making out that? I've, I've no <laughs> issue with that, by the way. But I came in and the guy was not happy. So it was... Uh, Toki and Yoko, Yoki, Yoki or Toki. <laughs> oh, I'm not. No, this is what the, these are the names, God, Dan. No. I didn't make the names. Oh, name. no. I didn't ask to, them to be called this, but he opens the door anyway, and sure, like obviously he was just like, you know, in and then like I was my, he Scouse Japanese or full full <laughs> Japanese? No, 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 no. He's like fucking Lads, you Pearl Harbor. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's <laughs> where are you staying? What where? Penny Lane, up around fucking <laughs> Penny Lane is Japanese. <laughs> da, 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 sushi do Japanese do do. Kamikaze pilots were fun. Anyway. Yanny so, Lane. Huh? Yanny Lane. Yeah, Yanny Lane. But so <laughs> anyway, I, I didn't, but I go up to the stairs. Uh, Sorry, that's don't bum me. Yeah. <laughs> What's Yenny? I, I don't... I'm, Yen I'm, is the uh, Japanese oh, fuck. Fancy, isn't it? I'm as tick as shit. I'm dumb. <laughs> um, that was good, Carolyn. No, I didn't give you anymore. the credit. So... Uh, I thought it was being racist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, really? We really? And I would say Lenny Lane. Yeah. If I was being racist. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I tell you, though, uh, so I went to go up the stairs then with my shoes on and your man nearly had a fucking heart attack. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, son. Crouching tiger, hidden Yoki, fucking. 
<laughs> what? Get back down. I was like, oh, fuck. Put them in the gang can. Yeah. And then I was like. Do you know, like, mate, we have hotels over here. Huh? <laughs> we have hotels now. For 30 pounds a night? Yeah. Do you? And I'll the probably, cheap I reckon. Are you on Japanese yeah. Airbnb? <clears throat> well, I'll... No, it's Eurovision weekend. It's so everywhere's chocker. Oh, the yes, only place so. left is Japanese Airbnb. Anyway, I was just like, you know, there was a vibe in there like if I left skid marks on the ball, I'd be fucking waking up with that. You know, like, you know, I'm fucking done for. But I tell you, it's not my worst Airbnb uh, situation. I got catfished, Airbnb catfished in Perth, Australia, because I went to stay with this lady. Now, it said the lady on, on the advertisement said her name was Pratty. She was 27 years old, loved making tea. And I said, by God, I've uh, been inside of Indian women before. I'll stay with her. And I'll probably end up lying on top for a couple of times and we'll have the best of time. So, like... Eating uh, your own jizz. Huh? Eating your own and I'll, jizz. And I will eat my own bloody jizz, Dan. <laughs> yes. Because I know that that's something that 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 helps them for some reason. Uh, <laughs> so, I goes over... Anyway, uh, to say which one, who comes out the door? This big, like, huge old Indian woman. And I was like, where's uh, Pratty? <laughs> she, she was like... That's my daughter. She's like, and she didn't sound like that. But she's like, that's she's like, that's my daughter. And and she's like, she's gone. She's like, take your shoes off. I was like, oh fuck. So now I'm in staying with this one. I don't want to lie on top of her at all, Carl. She's not. It's not like <laughs> she's a disgrace, right? And uh, no offense, but this, no offense. No, <laughs> you're a disgrace. Yeah, but, ah, your daughter is fit, and you're a disgrace. No but a, but a nice. I'm shagging yeah. you. Say yeah. Airbnb. Well, you know, yeah. I'm not shagging. And the fuck your daughter. Yeah. I'm not fucking you, you disgrace. No I offense. Kn- yeah, no offense. <laughs> take your shoes off. I had the Johnny already on. I was out there and I <laughs> I said, for fuck's sake. Um, so anyway, but she was too old to have a child so I could raw dog her. That was the only thing. That, no. Uh, so, <laughs> no. Rewind. Oh, I'm a, I'll, I'll be, I won't be allowed to be buried uh, beside a church, but... I, uh, so I goes in anyway, and she's so, lads, she's so mean to me for like a month. She's just so, and she's, she's like, she's fucking racist as fuck, right? She? Like, yeah, but well, she used to do this thing, lads. She'd go, she I'd go into the toilet and I'd use the toilet and then she'd shout at me and she, she, she'd be like, come in here. I'd go in there and she'd point at the toilet and there'd be like a hair on the toilet bowl. And she's like, you are disgusting. You are a disgusting pig. I swear on my life. And I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. Like she had me, she was in my head. And I was like, I'm no good. I was in my room. I'm like, I'm no good. I'm filth, right? And then she was always like, she was just always watching Dawson's Creek. Like just, that's all she watched. What a she, racist she, bitch. She, she would lie in, well, obviously that's a white supremacist show. So she would, she would lie on her side on the couch like this, just watching Dawson's Creek. And you know the team tune, like, I don't want to wait. And she'd be singing along with it. I don't want to wait. Like just like lying on her side. And then... She was, Dan, look at me, and she was, so. It was when you sang the Dawson's yeah. Creek theme tune in her voice. And I, but I'm just, that's what it sounded like. It would, if I say, I don't want to wait, that's not what it yeah, was. Yeah. Oh, no, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So then. Oh, then it's fine. But then she was always as well, she was always just farting like the loudest, just rippers. And she was just like on her side, just blasting them into the fucking kitchen. And then she was like. <laughs> And I swear to God, she was like, my doctor told me I have to. She's like, to fart, like, that's bad for her to hold in the fucking gas, you know? So I was like, all right, whatever. Next thing, she would have her fucking, uh, her friend Margaret, this little blonde one, you know, little fucking, like, blonde fucking perm, just full of fucking piss and vinegar, would come over from another house, and they'd play Connect Four and be racist (laughs) about Aborigines. So she would come over and be doing that, and then... um, uh, uh, but then Margaret would like, cause like Piazzi's Indian. She came from it. Like Pia- Margaret would come out and she'd just complain to the next person about Piazzi. You know, like I mean, it was just a a cycle. But um, her daughter did come then at one stage to visit, and it turns out she didn't want to fuck me at all. Oh, <laughs> what a waste of time! Oh. Yeah, it was a waste of time. Yeah, it was a fucking pain in the arse. But like, you would stay. You're not staying in Airbnb. You're you're staying in like a big hotel, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Not on Eurovision <laughs> weekend. Finn, have you got any questions? Oh god. Yeah. Yeah, we got <laughs> Yeah, we gotta have a word. We'll just do that and then we'll lick yeah. the day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Mike. Wow. It's time to have a word In fact, this theme tune's boring. I don't want no word. 
For my life to be over. <laughs> this is from Louis or Lewis McDonald. Uh, so, all right, lids, could you have a word with my mate? Let's call him Warbo or his girlfriend. Warbo's been with his girlfriend. In Australia, like. <laughs> Warbo's been with his girlfriend now <laughs> for many years in a long di- distance relationship, so doesn't see her that often. Warbo loves a bit of dabble on the dancing powder and the disco biscuit, but his birds like the drug Gestapo and doesn't think he's ever touched a drug in his life. We're all going on holiday next year to hide out, which is going to be seven days of us getting off our tits and they're both coming. And he's told her, don't be shocked if she sees us doing drugs, but he's not touching any. Have a word with him for being a shit house and not telling his bird the truth. Or have a word with her for being a Tory and judging people for what they do in their own free time. They're just not going to last. They're just not going to last. That's a deal breaker for her. And he's just going to... He's lied. Yeah, he's just, they're just not going to last. I know somebody who's done, who's been in a relationship a decade and that person doesn't know he does drugs. You're talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I've seen the eight minutes you were on drugs and it was pretty bad. So I don't <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's possible to lie. They're, just, you're, they're not going to last, are they? It's just going to end... If you're comfortable lying about something that big for that long, you you end up just lying. But then, would you say to him, just tell her, "I'm going to do this if you're okay with it." He's got to come clean and go. Look, I know you ate this, which is why I've lied about it. I do it. I'm going to continue to do it because he is. And I'd like you to do it. He should invite her into the fun. Yeah. Like, like obviously, because if she does it once, that's all she wrote. (laughs) Maybe, maybe she just goes, "Oh my god, drugs are great." Yeah, They're really good fun. Well, have you ever met anyone that's done like MDMA once? That's like drugs are terrible. No, it's because it's people that have never done them. Well, I thought they were bad yeah. till I did them, and now I know they're the answer. <laughs> <laughs> the this, cure. this whole thing is 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 set up on a lie, and that's on Warbo, isn't it? Yeah. She, maybe she, she's anti drugs, but you are allowed to be someone who's like, I don't like drugs. You're allowed to be someone who's like, I hate alcohol for whatever reason. And then if you meet someone and they're like, yeah, so do I. So do I. Who's, whose fault is that? That's the person who's come into that relationship lying. She sounds, yeah, tight and wound up. Like Laura is now not happy with me doing drugs, but that's because she was sound and gave me free range and I fucked that up. So now she has a right to be like, yeah, well, that stressed me out and I'm worried about you. So that's a totally different setup, isn't it? Yeah. This one is... She just doesn't like drugs. Yeah, either get her on the drugs or yeah. you have to be more honest. Spiker, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Is that maybe. The, yeah. At, at home. I, I, but like, and, but, and then, but like in a kind of a chill way and just be like, listen, I know you're going to panic for a minute, but there was some ecstasy in that. <laughs> and then be like, I'm not going to talk to you till you come up and then lock her in room. But then when she comes up, then have the chat and then be like, <laughs> Yeah, because she'll be, she'll love you then. Oh, she'll be absolutely delighted. No, then you go, <laughs> you go. Are you on drugs? Be... And she goes, what? And you go, you're on drugs. I'll do them as well then. Yeah, right. Did you? Think? I'll do them. And actually, I've got a time machine. I'm gonna go back and do them for ten years. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are they doing? Going to a festival where he loves getting on it, and he's like, yes, yeah, she's coming, and because I'm gonna she pretend looks, she doesn't think it's a problem, does she? She doesn't know, so she's like, no. can I come? And he can't go, no! No, but how has he got himself in this situation where he's like, all he's his, liar. but all his wreckhead mates are going, he's yeah. definitely one of going to do it. And then Susan's coming and she's fucking dry. That's going to be, I want the report of how this goes, this festival, when you, Just when it happens. Call him clean. He's could you, clean. could you email in whoever, who, who is it? Lewis? Lewis or Louis. I don't know which one. But Lewis, Lewis, email in. After I, I want to know how this pans out. Yeah, your life would be a lot better if you just fucking like any time uh, you, you get into this pa- pattern of like lying about these things. It's always weighing in you. I find it's just like fucking tell her because that's who you are. So then the, the the you that she likes is a fucking lie. That's not yeah. even you. It's yeah. just some fucking bullshit version you're you're putting so she'll keep sucking your kiak. But yeah, yeah. Fucking cack. I think that's there we it. Go. I think there we go. Solved. Yep. Podcast done. I'm on tour. Adamro.co.uk. Dan's on tour. DanNightingale.com. The oh. podcast is on tour. Haveawaredlive.com. We've got a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Haveawaredpod. 
Mike, where can they find you? Uh, uh, Mike and Vittorio's Guide to Parenting. I have a podcast with Vittorio Angeloni. It's I, fucking brilliant. Yeah, uh, it's good. I have another one uh, with a great Irish comedian called Rob Moriarty. It's called Big Mike and the Chief. And then just uh, Instagram and stuff. And there, there'll be a special coming out in the next month or two as well. Right, Lovely. Yeah. Finn. Mm -hmm. Song. Oh, that was very... Uh, Players out. Camp. Uh, so this is a band called... Her eyes, they shone like diamonds. Can you have to ask I thought her the queen, queen of the land. The her hair her went over her, her shoulder. Tied up in a black velvet band. Some people play? say I fight like me da. <laughs> it's <laughs> the, the Dubliners. It's the Dubliners. A new band week. from yeah. Ireland called the <laughs> Dubliners. Giving them a chance. Uh, this is Ask Elliot with Bending Over Backwards. Shite. Yeah. That's, that's Carl's opinion. It's kind of Irish folk. Yeah. It's drum and bass. Yeah, yeah. If you really want it to be. Scar. Uh, Press the button. Enjoy this song. Appreciate you, lids. Bye, Felicia.